Larry and Kathy J's Blazing Hit Radio. From the mile high. And now worldwide. Welcome. Blazing Hit Radio, it's Monday. Hi. Hi, good morning, hey. everybody. Um, got back from Louisiana last night. Yes. You, eh. you went down for your mother-in-law's service. You know, yeah. And it was like, wow, it was overwhelming on every level. I'll talk about some of it later. But I was going to say, I hadn't, I didn't eat for like two days. Oh, no. Because okay. there was nothing to eat <laughs> for me. Because down in the South, they don't understand plant-based. <laughs> Vegan, vegetarian, <laughs> nothing. To them, plant-based means you're poor and you're eating dirt. <laughs> <laughs> you're eating with the cows. You're right. Oh, I have a whole new story about uh, my relationship with a certain cow and bull. It's really cool. Oh, I no, mean, yeah, Larry. It reaffirmed why you're kind eating of the way it you're really eating, did right? in a natural way. Meanwhile, <laughs> two houses down. <laughs> right, no, no. Everybody <laughs> there eats meat. There's boudin, sausages, uh, uh, every stand, you know, every five yeah, feet. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, it's a very meat culture alligator, this, that, the other. So uh, crawfish everywhere. Oh, yeah. Um, but so it was the, we arrived that day and then we got there and really. Friday. Yeah, yeah. And Tommy, a family member, awesome guy. He literally did make us some vegetarian um, oh. beans and rice. Oh, Tommy. So we did have some food to eat right when we got there. So, but the next day uh, we were trying to figure it out. And so we went to the store to get some stuff. And I just got like a uh, frozen, one of those frozen um, broccoli pies from Amy. <laughs> okay. You know. Oh, they had Amy's down there? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, sure. well, then that's good. No, they have like you full fledged markets. Fine. Okay. But then Chris put it in the toaster oven and completely burnt it. <laughs> so you're like, so guess I can't I eat that. Turned it over and started eating from the bottom, but there wasn't very much. <laughs> no. So then it was fine. So then we went to need a service, and they had like um, this little get together afterward at this coffee shop that Nita liked, and it was big and there was really cool zydeco music playing live and cool. it was really cool and then they were like hey everybody eat so of course it was like a big thing of meatballs <laughs> yeah a big thing of like those little sausages <laughs> right and totally. barbecue sauce uh-huh, right a big little huge, cocktail weenies <laughs> a big huge tray of deviled eggs and cheese dip so uh, it was like every single thing. <laughs> the, the, so I just ate chips. So like, so Nita had the last word with you. Exactly. She's all, ha, 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 ha. She uh, never respected your dietary exactly. restrictions. Um, so <laughs> yeah. So it was just kind of funny. So like yesterday when he came home and we landed, I was like, I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> but you look really good. Oh, thanks. You definitely yeah. dropped about five. Exactly. I should go there more often. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> You'd be starving. Um, but it was awesome, like, uh, you know, just to be around family and stuff like that around that time. And, you know, we don't get to spend that much time with all that family in, right. from over there and from Texas. Um, but it was, it was a time for everybody to come together and it was cool. The problem was every lady down there looks like my mother-in-law right <laughs> so out of my they peripheral kind of look the white same, hair right? heavy set <laughs> short hair and out of my peripheral i was kept going ah! <laughs> like, and, like he's back especially because the priest need everyone Nita. Nita, she's Nita back. everybody well and the priest didn't help because his whole speech was like or not speech or whatever his, and, and it was sermon kind of, sermon and it was kind of awkward because you know, they weren't really super religious. Right. But then people down there expect a religious ceremony. Yes. You know what I mean? So Maybe at the right. funeral home, they decided to have this priest. Well, it turns out Nita was Baptist and the priest was Catholic. Which uh, I didn't know if that, that was an issue. I think it's an issue. <clears throat> well, anyway. You're so, damn right I think it's an issue. I don't, I don't get it. So the difference. Southern I, Baptist versus Catholic? Right. Yeah. I, I just don't know okay. the deal between right, them right. or what their differences are or whatever. So all of a sudden, uh, he tells Tommy, he goes... Oh, she well, she wasn't Catholic. He's like, well, then why am I here? The priest like, said oh, that. He really oh. said that. Oh. Yeah. And then he got up, and I just kept looking at him like, you're checking out all the kids here. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, I would like to say it, it, typical Catholic you priest. You can't be what, judgmental <laughs> if you're a you're Catholic a priest. priest. What are you yeah. doing? No, no, no. But and, again, Catholic. Well, and then I'm his, Catholic. His whole speech was, or sermon was, um, about Jesus walking up to this woman whose son had died. And he's like, don't worry, ma'am. I'll raise him from the dead. And so I was like, oh, you're kind of setting high expectations. <laughs> wow. She's already cremated. Wow. And all this is going to be good. Wow, everybody stand back. <laughs> the other thing that was prevalent down there was some people definitely don't know gay, what gay is. Uh -huh. They don't get it or they don't want to get it. Okay, but so, Nita's family, extended some, family oh, no, and they, stuff, they, yeah. it's gay. Yeah, but I, well, not it's gay, but you Tommy's have, gay, Chris right, and exactly. Char are gay. Me, yeah. you know, it's gay. Right, there's a lot of gay. <laughs> but so, but in um, 
there was a lot of people that were just coming up anyway that we didn't know. You okay, know? right, right, right. So they kept coming up. And the literally, literally, two ladies came up and they were like, because I was sitting in the area where the family's just yeah. There, and they're like, "Are you family?" And I was like, "Oh yes, I am uh, Chris's husband." <laughs> and they were like, and she looked at me and then she looked at her friend. She's like, and she said, "Huh?" And she's. It's Char's husband. <laughs> so she completely went into she did denial. It, she did it. So she was like, because Chris doesn't even rhyme with Char. No, at all. So They're she's not like, even it's close. It's Char's husband. So then even. And what did you do? I was just like, mm hmm. Right. Sure. So, whatever. Right. I'm never going to see you again. <laughs> well, Move and along. Then, to be honest, it's like, even I think Chris's dad sometimes has a hard time. Yeah, no, for um, sure. Kind of saying that, like, maybe a dad like, would. He's like traditional Cajun, Southern Cajun dude. Right. But he definitely has no issue. No, with, he doesn't. Uh, he his loves kids. his children. Uh, absolutely. But it was somebody went up to him and they were like, uh, and he was introduced. He's like, this is Larry. And they're like, uh, and who are you? And he's all, uh, Larry is, Larry is, he's with Chris. And he's Chris's friend. And so I was like. He's with Chris. He's That's totally as good as uh, it's gonna right, get, exactly. right? For that, you know, <laughs> to I mean? see Paul, see right. your father-in-law, right? Because these, um, are, and then the, the, to the, his point, like I, I kind of see why he's uncomfortable because when the priest started doing his thing, I didn't know this. I maybe I haven't been doing enough funerals, but uh, with like priests there or whatever. But everybody in the whole church starts saying things as he's saying things. Right, right, right. There's like, and he's like, and you know, that's what Jesus said, and also, also with you, with and you, everybody right. keeps reciting right. things. And totally, and that is the Catholic, yeah. Right, and it was kind of weird because. Um, like I said, Chris's family isn't religion, so we're sitting in the front row, not knowing any words, <laughs> and everybody else behind us is like doing the shout out, the uh, what do you call that flash mob? Yeah, totally, uh, religious right. flash mob. Where and, you go back, you go. Yeah, it's right. a chant. Right. And him with me through the shadow <laughs> right, of the exactly. blah blah blah. Right. Right. No, it wasn't that no, bad. So you mean just our Lord's prayer? Well, no, no. We that, 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 okay. that eventually came, and that was the one I knew all the words Yay. to. And so of the. Four of us in the front row, I knew the words, so Chris was all, mm, impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I used to go to church with my grandma, because I would really get the church in in the summertime. Like, we would do Sunday church as well as mass right, on Wednesdays. Okay. So you'd get it in, but I, it took me a second, because I'm a child, you know, and I'm trying right. to learn it and stuff, so I would uh, have to, like, lean in closer to my great aunt. As she was doing it, and all she ate all the time were those onions, those scallops or whatever, <laughs> the shallots, right? And so you'd be leaning in trying to she hear. She would just eat those by themselves? She would just have them in water at dinner every night, and at the, after dinner, she'd pull them out and just start She's chewing not, them. I never want a husband. So her breath always smelled a certain way, but here I am. I, as a kid, I'd be leaning into her like, "How does she say that? How do we word this back?" Right. You know. So Onion I breath. learned by listening to a stinky breath, great aunt with a hair coming out of her mole. And that's why you, to this day, love <laughs> French onion dip. <laughs> to this day, I can't get enough of that. You got any around you right now? Something in me yeah, just yeah. goes crazy. Um. So yeah, it was awesome, and like I'm just glad that again, like we got to have that whole family connection and. Like, um, Tommy did such an amazing thing and that he, he I didn't know he was saying, he sang. And so like, uh, it was funny cause he started singing amazing grace. Well, everybody there knows all the words. Gotta know that one. But you could tell he was like, uh, I'm singing it. Like, this is my song. Oh, I love because, it. Right. Like he was getting mad that other people kind were singing not, along. But I mean, he kind of made it his own. So this like, my if, moment. This were, if this were American <laughs> Idol, they you would mean, like, like he trailed off like a Christina Aguilar, <laughs> but kind of, but he was like, um, he would go on, on high notes, so he'd be like, "Amazing grace, how sweet it is." I don't know. Oh, he had to okay, do his okay, own right. variables. I don't know. He wanted to make sure nobody could follow him, right? Or, I, exactly. Right. Or he wanted to solo be people. above the fray. I don't know. But it was really nice. And they, you know, he had said that uh, uh, Paul had said that Nita was the glue that kept the family all together. Yes. And so now we all committed to being the glue that keeps us stuck. Aww. And so we're going to make sure that you know. Uh, we see everybody at Christmas and stuff like that. Right. And, you know, that Paul's not by himself. And No way. He can't right. be. Well, and then it was funny because I was like, Paul, technically, there's 10 ladies here that you could just move right in. Who are dying I'm to have people, a man. People would not know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, right. well, you they all look like her. They all look like Nita. <laughs> right, exactly. People were just like, hi, Nita. Beep, beep. Maybe he wants something different this time around. <laughs> no, it was funny, too. And the their, their dog passed not that long ago. Mm. It was this little tiny chihuahua. 
soccer. I had him forever. Chris found him on like Santa Fe and six. Yeah. And he was running loose and they had him for like 16 years. Yeah, I know. Wow. And I never expected that dog to live that long. Yeah, I know. And so <laughs> it was there when Kathy got ditched at homecoming. <laughs> yeah, no, not that long. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, they had that chihuahua. And so then Paul was sitting there a moment to himself and everybody was like, hey, Paul, what do you think about getting another dog? And he was like, yeah. So this time I'm gonna go big. Yeah. Like, I want a big dog, right? Because he had to it, take, that little tiny take thing, little right? Tiny dog around. He's all a, big. a normal right. size dog. You know, I go, Paul. You know, nothing like a great Dane around the house. <laughs> yeah. I go, Paul. You have a baby calf in the backyard. Just let it in. <laughs> oh my God, those animals are cool. Okay, yeah, you have to tell us about. Yeah, that I'll tell you about that later. Yeah. But uh, again, you but know, again, to, I'm sorry. Yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. And to to Chris, both of you, you guys oh. are both close to her. Oh yeah, yeah. I, mean, it was, sure. it I was just, so sad I couldn't have been there. Oh no, couldn't. It's all good. I mean, some. Sometimes those things happen. I know. It's like we didn't get to make it to your dad's service. So. It, it happens suddenly. My grandma had her stroke, and she's still slowly probably not going to recover, but she's in the home. And then her brother-in-law just passed away three days ago. Wow. Oh, yeah. So it just it just happens, and you just you, you want to be there. Mm-hmm. And it sucks that you almost wish that the airlines would give you a discount a for that. A break. And say, hey, if you can... Pr- it's kind of like that Seinfeld. If you can prove this, we'll right. give you a great do deal. They, but they don't that, even do that. They don't do that anymore? I, well, I don't... I oh. mean, in that They have some sort of bereavement, but it's not... It it's has not like, to be like an immediate family member on top of the fact that it's not that big of a discount. Yeah. Right. From what I remember when my dad passed away. Yeah, you know, right. let me go to Indiana because it's going to be so much fun. Like, I'm going to have a vacation. It's like, no, airlines, like, let me go grieve properly. Right, but they, you know, think about it. If all of us have lost somebody and, I mean, if they were... It's like everybody away. would be like, uh, we all lost somebody around Christmas. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, you sure? Uh, yeah, 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 they yeah, live yeah, in Hawaii. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> First class, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shoot, another one right before New Year's. What are we going to do? Yeah, right. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, that was just amazing and just mad love for the family. Well, yeah, that's good. for that's real. Good. And I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you want to go order some breakfast? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, you should have seen like last you night. You could have had french fries galore. I had three vegetarian empanadas from Maria's empanadas. Oh, yeah. oh, they were so awesome. And it was cool because, you know, down there it's real like people bring food and yeah, people yeah. bring all kinds of food I can't eat. Here's some gumbo. Right, but when we landed... Um, that's my, a frog leg sticking out of it. Oh, my, <laughs> Isn't that hard, though? You smell food. You're starving. Like no, It's not like no. a temptation where you want to give in just because there's... Dude, the, I was more about feeding the animals in the back. I was going to say, back. wait till you hear. I was so he excited. Was stealing food. From Paul from, from and from my father-in-law, who doesn't have a wife who... anymore to cook for him. I'm stealing like his last meal <laughs> to feed to these cows. So much so that his father-in-law was like, are you going to take all of my food and give it to that He actually called cow? you out? I yeah. was up, but I told him, I was like, the cornbread's really dry. Tommy made it. It's not good anyway. <laughs> it was really dry. Like I ate one muffin and it turned into sawdust in my mouth. Okay, I hate that. So that's right. why I gave it to the to cows. the cows. Mm, right. right. All right. <laughs> was Tommy the singer? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Tommy's Tommy. hilarious. Yeah. You know, he is from what I remember of Super Tommy. funny. Yeah, he's did gonna... his sister show. Yeah. Oh yeah, his okay. sister. Everybody did. Right. Yeah, it was awesome. Oh, I'm really sorry. Yeah, yeah. And thanks to the twelve Nitas that showed up. <laughs> Turn it up. More music, less commercials. Blazing It Radio, Larry Uliberry, Kathy J. Wiggins. It's Monday. Another Bronco loss. Hey. Yeah, but let's talk Star Wars. Okay. Yeah, anything but. Anything I don't even but. Watch, well, I, I, I was on a plane, so I wasn't watching the game. But all you got to do is turn on Facebook to see what the Broncos are doing. Oh, yeah. People, <laughs> people are yeah. annoyed. Hey, I got a lot done yesterday. Exactly. <laughs> So Star Wars comes out December 15th, and you are already yes. going, right, Larry? Yeah, yes, I will be. Uh, I, I'm going to the media thing, and then I'm also going to the We Bought Tickets as well. Yeah, you're ready. Yeah. You're double dipping. Well, and then, like, the thing is, I didn't know if you were allowed to wear costumes. Because remember, like, <laughs> they banned <laughs> costumes from movies for a while? Oh, yeah, they did. But then um, when I was at the Justice League, people were dressed as superheroes. Yeah. So and, I think costumes are bad. Right. And there was a guy... And I wouldn't really call him Batman as much as I would have called him Fat Man. Oh, <laughs> That's okay. That's usually how it is. <laughs> Very rarely do you get somebody that could naturally fit into those right, costumes. Right, exactly. Would you ever go dressed up? Uh, well, yeah, no, I mean, you have 20 
costumes for I know. Star Wars. The problem is the costumes I have are just too hot, big, right? Like I'd be sitting in Darth Vader's helmet, right, or the Imperial Guard, Guard helmet. helmet. Right, exactly. You can't and see what just exactly. happened. Hey, that guy's blocking my view. I can't see. What right. just happened? <laughs> get out of our way, <laughs> idiot! You can never get the popcorn in your mouth. I guess if I really went out and got an official Jedi outfit, but I've never really connected with yeah. Jedi's. I was more about the bad guys. A little right. bit more comfortable, the robe. Right, a stormtrooper thing. Yeah. Your taint would be all sweaty. Oh, totally. Right. I, I remember taking the Darth Vader costume on your everyday show, Kathy, yes. and couldn't sit down. Remember yeah, that? And so I like stepped on the cape as I fell down, <laughs> yeah. and everyone was just laughing. <laughs> well, it's not every day you see Darth Vader bite the dust. <laughs> yeah. it, it was awesome. Producer Bolte had to wear it one time. Uh-huh. Yeah. When I voiced, I did the voice off to the side. Right. And Producer Bolte put on it on. On the morning show, you went on Channel 2. Right, and we were uh, in the room where guests change or yeah, whatever. The green room. Right, and so I'm like literally on my knees putting the cod piece on Bolte <laughs> when people walk in. It just looks awkward. Piece. It looks like a Darth Vader jock strap okay, over, that's over the, his lightsaber. That's the first part that goes on, right? Or is that no, the... that, that's the final. Like oh, you, okay. After you have the whole thing on, you put that little cod piece okay, on. Because so. I was about to be like, wow, that's like the first thing. Mike oh, yes? done that himself. This no, is weird. Oh, yes. No, it's on the outside, and it's like, I guess if Darth Vader got hit in the nuts, it's like a cup. <laughs> yeah, hey. it protects him. You know what? You know that's where Princess Leia was going. She was already at that level. Exactly. You know, just one jab to the yeah. to the lower let nether region. Oh, I thought you said something else about Princess Leia. I was like, that's his fa- her father. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, that that's gross. Wrong. No, I was talking about No, Padme. Yeah. So uh, Jimmy Kimmel had on Mark Hamill, who I love Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. He's he, also the Joker, the yes. voice of the Joker. That nobody ever Oh, knows that's him. I mean, oh. and a lot of other animated stuff. He is just brilliant, and yeah. I, his Joker is on point. So yeah. if you ever watch Batman the animated series, which I've seen, everyone growing up, it's on Amazon. I watched him again. He is the best Joker. So much so that his whole fan base thinks he should have been the Joker. The Joker now in the upcoming movie. Which did you know Leonardo DiCaprio is going to do that? Well, yeah. It, no, wait, what? what, what, what? Yes, Leonardo He's DiCaprio is going to be the but new Jared, Joker. Jared Leto, Man, is- he sucked. Uh, I kind of thought he was squad. the hottest yeah. Joker. I thought he was a good Joker. Yeah, I, mean, I love the way his do, look. He I, could do crazy. Yeah, no, he was dumb. Sure. Leo's going to be way better. No, Leo will be good. Leo. Mark Hamill, too old to be yeah. a Joker. I know, but what if he was just like... Yeah, Joker in, Joker in a wheelchair. Joker in a wheelchair. So Jimmy Kimmel had uh, Mark Hamill on. They're talking about the movie coming out um, with The Last Jedi, uh, December 15th. By and, the way, can I just mention this really quick? Uh-huh. Uh, coming up on Saturday, you can win tickets to see Star Wars uh, by going to see Kathy at Larry H. Miller Nissan, and you can qualify for a family four pack. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. And that's uh, Saturday. That's Saturday. From 11 to 1. So when Mark Hamill was with Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel asked him how he kept the secret because no one, not even the cast, knew about the reveal about Darth Vader being Luke's fa- father. Okay. So the cast didn't even know that was in the script. It was ke- kept oh, all so the way Mark from. Oh, so Mark Hamill's telling Jimmy Kimmel. So okay. he's, he's describing to Jimmy Kimmel about There's how, how he kept line. it a secret. Yep. It was torturous because for a year and a half, I mean, I was really nervous that I'd slip up or talk in my sleep or something. It was, it was, a, it was a real burden. But I'm really proud because by, by the time we saw the screening and it happened, everybody, even in the screening that had worked on the film and the cast was there too, were stunned. Harrison turned around. He was sitting right in front of me. He said, hey, kid, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, yeah. I, I apologize. I only included the F bomb for historical accuracy. Well, that's, <laughs> the one said that's what he said. Does he like your imitation of him? Uh, I, I don't think so. I got a phone call from one time. He said, hey, I don't sound anything like that. <laughs> oh my God, he sounds just like him. He's good, man. He's like, I got a bad feeling about yeah. this. He's got the scruffy voice. So, Could you uh, imagine you couldn't even tell somebody that worked on the movie with you? I know. It was part and, of the Central Core group. Right. And it's like only Luke knew because he said the line. Right, You know right, what I mean? So they would have told Harrison if he was in the scene, but he's not. Yeah, I get that because it was just the two of them right. that filmed that. So, well, well, Whoever and then, was in the Darth costume. Right, that actor uh-huh. and then... And Mark Hamill. Yeah. Wow. And the guy on the wind machine. Right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did he say? Yeah, and that's when he cuts <laughs> off his hand and Luke's like... Aah! Do you know there's also a myth about that? What? How do you remember that line? About... Luke. I, I am your father. Is that how you remember it? Luke, I am your father. Yeah. He doesn't say Luke. Like, it oh. was this, it's this huge thing on the internet. He's you gotta all, go Carl, I am your father. <laughs> no, I think he says, no, 
I am your father. Oh, okay. There's so, you know, you but, want me pulled up? I can pull it up. Yes. Yeah, it at the end, how Whip it's it out, Wiggins. It's a huge, like, scandal thing. But you know, while Wiggins is working on that, Parente, Chris Parente, who hosts the Everyday Show with me uh-huh. on Fox 31, he went this past weekend to L.A. to interview the Star Wars crew. Right? No doubt. And here's the thing. They don't even let the the critics, the the media, see the film. So this is the second time he had to go to a Star Wars film and then just and talk not about see it. the movie wow. and ask the questions. Wow, which but, is kind of crazy. Well, and the thing is, sometimes they do that like when a movie's going to suck, but not in this case because yeah. they didn't do that for Force Awakens or uh, yeah, the very first one. Yeah, they didn't do uh, premieres. No, nope. because uh, and they just knew it was rock solid, so they didn't really need premieres. They they don't really, and also why why take the gamble of some stupid person from giving Sacramento away, or something right, giving, giving it away. away? But here's where I was going. So he gets to interview the director of the film, right? Okay. Turns out. The director grew up in Evergreen and credits the entire Star Wars look to his upbringing in the backyard in Evergreen. Huh. Isn't what? that cool? Are you serious? That's no, awesome. No, that is cool. Yeah. You know, when, cause Larry's going to go to Evergreen. Yeah, now. exactly. Like, well, it's just foothills. You yeah. know, like if, if a lot of those houses, and, yeah. their backyards are the woods. Yeah, yeah, for so sure. So he, growing up playing in that, oh, turned that cool. into... Whatever we're going to see in this Star Wars movie, which is so cool. What a we're like, it. oh my God, there's I-70. <laughs> there are those speeder bikes are going down it. Uh, what? There's, there's the M on the mountain. Right. That's, that's school of mine. Right. That doesn't mean man took. No, no, they, they use graphics and change it to a D. Yeah. Darth. Yeah. There's yes. a period in the dog factory. <laughs> um, here's the Star Wars clip. It is useless to resist. Don't let yourself be destroyed as Obi-Wan did. That's a good movie. Okay, so they're just doing a lot of fighting. Uh, uh, they just there goes the hand. Out. Yeah, everybody knows this. This is awesome. Do the popcorn escape. Don't make me destroy you. Luke, you do not yet realize your importance. You have only begun to discover your power. Join me, and I will complete your training. With our combined strength, we can end this destructive conflict and bring order to the galaxy. I'll never join you! If you only knew the power of the dark side, Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough! He told me you killed him. No. I am the father. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I would have still been screaming like that for my hand. Uh, yeah, you know right? what I mean? The fact that he recovered so quickly from losing his hand. I, maybe, maybe because the lightsaber cauterizes it while yeah. it cuts. Oh, it, it really does, it. actually. Right. Yeah, and maybe yeah, right. there's some little pain med in there. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what it is. That's exactly He's still in shock. You're saw, right, Larry. That's I, what's happening. Let me hit the aloe vera setting. <laughs> <laughs> but it opens December 15th, everybody. So get ready. Get your tickets now, like Larry, if you're a Star Wars head and you got to be there. I'm super wet. So, well, oh, wow. <laughs> you can't afford that. You have elect- a lot of electrical stuff going I'm on up moist. here. I'm moist. You can't do that, Doug. I have to change my cod piece. <laughs> you should go. <laughs> Balti! <laughs> Balti. You help him. <laughs> change cod pieces with me. So everyone's trying to capitalize off of Star Wars, and so there's actually police out there right now. There's a police department uh, in another state that made an entire introduction video to their squad uh, for the new police. Okay, the, like the police academy That just got people, out of police right? academy. The Wookies. What do you? Shut they up. call. They're calling the rookies the Wookies. Well, they're calling them the Wookies. Here's a little clip. Okay. It's it's funny to watch because they go through the whole training and he's got. Are like, they being serious? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Today's roll call. Hayes, X Patrol on seven. Bala, follow up on that robber from yesterday. Jamie, you get the Wookie. I'm sorry. Did you say the rookie? No, the Wookie. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a cop okay. in a, a Chewbacca a complete stop. in a cop outfit. Just give her a warning. Aren't you a cute little doggy? He's giving a woman a ticket. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I don't understand a thing you're saying. <laughs> 
So they got Yeah, the- <laughs> I smell a lawsuit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's owned by Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how dangerous it is exactly. to play with stuff with, with that? Uh, right. They will find you. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know who I hope they didn't invite? Who? Who's that? Uh, to the premiere? Who? Who's George that? Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no more of him. Uh. Right, like, but he's still, he's still. No, he gets. Pro- to come. I mean, like, he probably gets right. like the first thing, and he gets right. to watch he gets it to cut the Skywalker ribbon, Ranch, gets, right? No, no, for sure. They okay. they grandfathered him in. Okay, good. Okay. But he doesn't get any say. No, you know what no. I mean? Because like, he probably must kill him to sit there and go. Well, maybe you should have done this. I could have used some more CGI right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Right. He doesn't How could you even have a big line that's covered in feathers? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or yeah, a racist alien. Where's right. the racist alien? <laughs> And now, all tea, all shade, honey. Celebrity Trash Batch with Larry, Kathy, and Wiggins. Gotta get an amen up in here. Sponsored by the Mike Soil Law Firm. Call 303 Good Law. Here's Kathy J. We were just talking about Star Wars coming out on yeah. December 15th. And our lightsabers went up. <laughs> Over the weekend, the, the movies that made it big, no competition at all for Coco. The movie, the animated movie from Pixar, they held on to the top spot at the box office. Twenty-six million. They're up to one hundred and eight million in its second week. That's we are, huge. We are taking Avery to see that this week. Yeah, we should. Yeah. This is the week, right? We're yeah. doing it. Justice League is holding in at number two. They've made one hundred and ninety-seven million. So yay! They finally were able to pay what it cost. Some people were flat on it on I social liked media. It. I liked it. Maybe everybody was expecting a ton. Right. You know, maybe everybody was expecting them to meet at that building like they did in the cartoon. Meanwhile, okay. back at the Justice League. He walks through that huge building right. and says, this right. is going to be a great spot. He says, spot. meanwhile, back at the <laughs> Justice League. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and then at the, the teaser at the end, can I talk about, because that, uh, that's uh, talking uh, about the Legion of Doom. Right, right, right. Yeah, totally. That's how you know if you're if you're a nerd and you really know the Justice League is right, if right. you can... If you know where right, the ending, you know where that guy's coming. Right, all going. the bad guys still have to come. Yeah, they and they have so many bad guys. Exactly. Yeah, so Chris Pratt, you know, we love Chris Pratt, and he has Ugh. officially filed from Anna Ferris. He officially filed on Friday divorce. The only that, way that I can deal with that story of them, because they were one of my favorite couples. Totally. The only thing that would make it bearable for me is if like they were like, well, Chris has come to terms with his homosexuality. <laughs> of and course, then I'd be they like, have to oh, be that. Okay, well, <laughs> well he that's was repressed. Why. Right. Okay, well, it's not your fault, Anna. Right. He was, you can't, he, he was faking the fun. What if she was gay? Maybe it's not I, him. Why has it got to be the guy? Because he's hot? <laughs> no, because Larry has to make all men gay. <laughs> Only the cool ones. Only the cool mm. ones. Would you have taken fat Chris Pratt to the gay team? Yeah, because I, I remember him on Parks and, Parks Rec. and Rec. Uh-huh. He was funny. And remember he was in um, uh, Wedding... The the Wedding... Um, you go back and you see he was in a lot of movies right. and you didn't recognize him. He was the boyfriend him. in the... What was the wedding between Kate Hudson and... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The, where the two best friends Bright, fight. Bright, bridal. Where Anne Hathaway right, and Kate right. Hudson fight. Bride Wars. Right. Bride Wars. He was in that? He was, yeah, he one, was of the, one of the boyfriends. One of the huh. fiancés. But anyways, back to this. Chris he Pratt. He was like, babe, you've been eating butter from different lands? <laughs> oh, no, that was the, the other boyfriend. <laughs> Never mind. Wow. You know that's a rom-com, right? Right, right. right. And we'll see. It's just Larry, funny because... for you to be able to quote that. Did you, you even know see that movie? A... <laughs> no. no. Okay, did you I even didn't, see it? I didn't sit all the uh, way through it. Okay, so the, the two chicks, Anne Hathaway and Kate Hudson, Hudson are bestie friends, uh-huh. and then they start sabotaging each other because they just become enemies. And so... Because they both wanted their wedding at the same, same place, place on blah, the blah, same blah. day. Right. Oh, okay. I saw it, and I turned it. Right. And yeah. then so um, one of the things that Anne Hathaway does is she's like starts sending Kate Hudson all these foods like uh, bouquets and cookie baskets like get and fat. right so she won't fit in her Vera Wang yeah so she's like sitting there uh, and he, he he's like she's like yeah she sent me butter from other lands he's like babe you've been eating butter from <laughs> other lands she's like yes <laughs> <laughs> so Chris Pratt is going after an imposter on Facebook if you got a message from Chris Pratt saying he wants to date you. It's not the real Chris Pratt. I don't, mean to, I don't mean to blow up your spot. Unless you're like, you know, <laughs> hot. But Chris Pratt posted a message the other day on Facebook saying, Pervy Dude Alert, all caps. Somebody's trying to pretend to be me on Facebook and maybe other social media platforms, apparently hitting on a lot of different female fans, try to get their numbers and who knows what else. So I would imagine that's like quite common with all stars. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. He says, it terrifies me to think that somebody could be hurt. Their feelings are much worse. 
by this imposter potential predator. I've had many, many, many people tell me about this. It's not an isolated incident. Please know I'm not looking for dates on Facebook. Right. Nor would we think you were. I know, right? But you know somebody is thinking that. Hello, if women will marry a guy on death row who yeah. killed a bunch of people, women are gonna they're going to fall, fall for, for that. That's Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt right? Yeah, right. Catfish. Ed Sheeran is saying... The only way I talk to people is email, and Beyonce changes her email every week, so that's why our song hasn't come out yet. Oh, that's hilarious. So if you don't know, Ed Sheeran, like a couple years ago, just was so sick of having to always be attached at the hip to his cell phone mm-hmm. that he doesn't have a phone anymore. What? He literally does all of his communication through emails. It's crazy. Like he, I don't remember where he was one time, but he was talking about. Yeah, it's gonna really bite him in the ass when he runs out of gas somewhere. Or, <laughs> right. Like it's a it's bunch it's of fans are following him. It says Ed Sheeran talked on Friday about working with Beyonce. I got the audio right here. I have uh, an email address that okay. I email um, that actually changes every week. Oh, <laughs> she's like, yeah, she's very good at um, hiding. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like what I aspire to be, I think. Okay. Um, but yeah, I have an email, so I emailed that, then we got on the phone, and uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's kind of been, it's been in the works since May. Wow. But obviously, she had twins, and uh, yeah, we've uh, we finished it in September, so I've been holding on to it since then. So the original version of Perfect was just an acoustic guitar, and yeah. she rang me up and was like, uh, I don't know how you feel about this, but I've taken all the instruments off it, and it's just going to be acoustic guitar. And I was like, Oh, it's great, because it used to be that. And then when we got in together, it wasn't so much notes, it was just, we, it was very much like a back and forth thing, like, what do you think of this? Yes. Well, what do you think of this? And uh, yeah, it probably took, I'm probably in the studio for like four hours. She was just like, right, went in, one take, came out, Bye. like, oh, that sounds alright. <laughs> well, wow, you know, her husband, cool. Jay-Z's what, 50,000 one take? So, right. So he, uh, she obviously does the exact same thing. That's talent. Um, No, I can't wait to hear what that song sounds like. Right, for sure. Pink, I love Pink. Props to Pink. She's my girl. And she is raising her kids gender neutral. What? Gender neutral. Remember because of the whole, the whole speech how her daughter was bullied, oh, saying right, right, that right. she looked like a boy, and Pink so how do you, that. How do you raise a kid gender neutral? Well, you raise them. You wear with... a lot of gray outfits. <laughs> it's a pant thing. So, uh, Pink gave this heartfelt speech at the VMAs over the summer. I saw she, that. Yes. Because she, her daughter was being bullied. Six-year-old Willow is being bullied, being called ugly. Pink told her that people used to make fun of her for being different. Now Pink's taking it a step further. She says we're a very labelless household. Last week, Willow told me she's going to marry an African woman. And I was like, great. Can you teach me how to make African food? And she was like, sure, Mama. And we're going to live with you while our house is getting ready. In addition to Willow, Pink has an 11-month-old son named Jameson. To be clear, she's not saying that she's ignoring the genders or that her kids are choosing their own sex. She's just not creating boundaries or restricting them to gender stereotypes. Right. Because so if her daughter says she wants to marry an African woman, she's not going to correct her by saying that's You'll be marrying a man. Or that's something that young girls don't do. Right. Well, and it was funny because I was, uh, I was talking about raising our daughters. <laughs> and by our daughters, I mean Avery, your daughters. Avery and Chiana. Right. Um, but uh, I, somebody had cut me off. Oh, no. Somebody was going really slow in traffic. And I was like, ugh. Quit driving like such a woman. Oh. And then I was like, man, that was you can't say that. I can't was like, say that anymore. Right, right. So in, in front of the girls, I thought, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Now, if a little girl, one of them, or a little boy does something amazing, we should always say, oh, such a woman. Right. Because that's <laughs> a good thing. Way to take thing. it like a woman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was just, Stand up straight. Exactly. Right. Turn no. it to a positive. I, in fact, the other day I was... Avery is at the stage where she cries about everything. Aww. Like she jumped on daddy the other day and hurt daddy and then she started crying. And Aww. daddy's over there like buckled in pain. <laughs> and she's the one crying. And was I'm it like, a knee to the cross? It sure was. Ah. <laughs> you know, you, you're so excited when they come up in the morning to like say good morning. And then they jump right in. And then in. they wham. The guys have a little bit more. Knee to bones <laughs> corrected to the crotch bone. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> I, right, I heard like a whimper come out of my husband. So, but He's I was like, "It's okay, I'm fine." Is that she was crying? <laughs> Seriously, it's okay. Just enjoy are you yourself. sure, babe? Yeah, I'm fine, Mr. No. Fishing. We're, we're right. worried. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Seriously. So, so, anyways, uh, it was a different occasion, but she was crying, and I was like, "Stop it! You need to, you know, man, man up." Right, and, and, there, and, there, and there it I, is. And then I coughed and went, "Woman up." Right, you know, like I it. like I re had to do it and go. God, it didn't even sound right coming out of my mouth, but I've said it my whole life. There needs to be a big painting of you above the fireplace in the Rosie Riveter outfit. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, okay, so speaking of um, that kind of stuff, and let's get into the sexual harassment that happened. Oh over- my God! Yeah, that, did you see SNL? 
on no. Saturday. Okay, I have, I have some clips from Trump it. Trump was visited by the like <laughs> yeah, three ghosts. Right, right, right. It was okay. funny. But the funniest thing was in the weekend update, they were like, Well, this is just kind of like a new news segment where they have to just list the pervs. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he's like, It's just like, you know, when they have to like roll the credits for right, something. Right, right. There's yeah. that many pervs. So so he got visited by the ghosts of Trump's past. I got Mike Flynn, Billy Bush, Vladimir Putin. Who do you want to hear first? Uh either. Either? Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll go with Billy Bush. Go in the order. Oh, go in order? All right, we'll go Billy Bush. Billy Bush! Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm here to remind you of that excess Hollywood tape, my man. Can you believe I got fired just for listening to you? <laughs> and then you got elected president, and now you're saying that that tape isn't even real? What? You'll be fine, Billy. I'm sure you'll find work again. Well, I, I hope so. Uh, frankly... I'm looking pretty good in the NBC News division right about now. <laughs> Remember, Donald, these things catch up with all of us. If you worked at NBC right now, you'd be fired, fired, fired. Okay. A Wait, lot of money. Come back. Where'd a lot you go? of money. You know what's funny is, you know, Bush was trying to say this thing on the side yeah. that that audio of him in the Access Hollywood bus right. was fake. That the whole Trump thing was, was fake. Yeah, Trump was it. trying to say right, that. Right. So Billy Bush came out yes. today and was like, oh, you got it. Yeah, he did. Billy Can't Bush. Wait. Okay. Billy Bush did a total like op ed that yeah. he did. And right. he said, no, I'm putting it all out there. His essay to the New York Times, Billy Bush said, of course he did it. And we laughed along without a single doubt that this was a hypothetical hot air from America's highest, greatest bloviator. <laughs> right. Along with Donald Trump and me, there were seven other guys present on the bus at the time, and every single one of us assumed we were listening to a crass stand-up act. He was performing. Surely we thought none of this was real, but Bush doesn't think it was just a performance. Not anymore, he doesn't think that. Especially after hearing the stories of the some 20 women who have accused Trump of kind right. of doing that. Right. But Bush is saying, I was there, I looked him in the eyes, and you know... He was right there. Yeah, he was totally doing it. So, that, so yeah, so I, I'm glad that Bush it. came love out. It. You know yeah. what he, he had to because no one has hired him, right. and you know, and he's he wasn't the one that did the acts. He was the one that just laughed along with it. And he said that he wished he was stronger. He wished he had more morals to stand up to Trump when the statement was said. But in his time off, he's really reconnected with his teenage daughters and is trying to tell them, don't take it from any man, you know, stand up for yourself in the workforce. Well, and it's like Trump's such a spin doctor and he's the big distractor guy that brings up 10 other things yeah. that you're thrown off. So it's like, yeah, he wanted to just float that out there. Oh, hey, that audio is fake. It's like, nice try, bro. Right, so and, and there's been the times where Trump admitted to it. He came out and apologized for it. Yeah, right. He said it wasn't right. I'm my bad. So what? he's that guy's crazy. Anyway, I know. So then two more ghosts. Who are the other two? We got Michael Flynn. Um, we have uh, Hillary. Hillary Clinton, and we have uh, oh, Vladimir Putin. Okay. Yeah, so it goes uh, Hillary Clinton's last. Let's go, then yes. Vladimir. He's after Billy. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mike, let's go Mike Flynn, and then we'll go Vlad. Yeah, I think Mike Flynn was first. Yeah, Vlad yeah. Flynn. Oh. Reflect on all the good things I've done this year. It'll only take a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. What's that? Donald J. Trump. Donald J. Trump. You come to get me, I knew it. It's the Muslim stuff, right? No. It's for calling Mexicans rapists? No. The Roy Moore stuff? No. Draft dodging? No. The Bertha stuff? No. Pocahontas? No. The Central Park Five? No, wait. Making fun of the handicapped reporter like this? No, sir! (laughs) Sir! I'm not here for any of that. So who are you, Jacob Marley? You've got a lot of chains on. No, I'm Michael Flynn, the ghost of Witness Flipped. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. President... I came to warn you, it's time for you to come clean, for the good of the country. The what? The good of the? The good of the country. The good would come come? <laughs> this is serious, sir. The FBI got to me. Before all this, I had a great life, Donald. I was an honorable, twice-fired military man who loved to talk about how Hillary Clinton had a child sex ring in a pizza shop. Oh, Mike, you were my man. You led the locker up cheer at the convention. Who knew you had so much dirt on you in your past? If only somebody had warned me about you. Well, President Obama did tell you not to hire me. I meant someone who's American. <laughs> they, uh, do, they do such a good job at just at did. just highlighting his yeah. incompetence. Oh, no, no, for sure. Like <laughs> You can tell that Alec Baldwin's sitting at home thinking of ideas, oh, yeah. calling them. Well, he's an easy... I mean, yeah. Trump 
allows himself yeah, to the, be an easy target. They could do a whole hour of just on him. Yeah, no, for sure. Do and, you read Alex's tweets? Oh, Alex, yeah, he's yeah, the best. I love his tweets. He just calls it how it is. No sugar coating. He, mm. It's awesome. He is. So between Vladimir and Hillary, since I didn't see those, were those good too? Oh, uh, yeah, you know, Hillary's hilarious. She's yeah, pretty yeah. short. Yeah, Vladimir, and uh, here's uh, Vladimir. Oh, no, it's happening again. You must be my present. Of course. Donald, you can't hide from me. I see and hear everything you do. Because you're a ghost? Yes, I'm a ghost. <laughs> Listen, uh, we put a lot of work into you. So much time and money, and you're about to mess it all up. You seem so volatile. I'm sorry, Vladimir, but I promise I'll be more diplomatic with North Korea and that fat little psycho who runs it. Whoa, Trump, <laughs> you have to chill out, broski. Uh, Vladimir, look, I've always wanted to ask you this. Do you think I'm cool? Uh, look, I have to go. <laughs> so that's a yes? I just have to go. Someone else is coming. Uh, they're coming. <laughs> Don't you see, Mr. President? This is Clinton. Any one of these spirits could bring you down. But the scariest one is yet to come. <laughs> oh no! It approaches. Mike, I'm too scared to look. Oh, thank God, Steve Bannon. <laughs> it's the Grim Reaper outfit. <laughs> You're here to save the day with your terrible white magic. Wait, who are you? Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> have given me the greatest Christmas gift of all, sexual gratification in the form of your slow demise. <laughs> you have no idea how long I've wanted to say this. Lock him up! Oh, yeah. yeah, she's good. Yeah. Oh. Go. All right, uh, so that was good. Yeah. And finally, because of all this sexual harassment, Hank Azaria and the Simpsons are thinking of retiring Abu. Apu. Uh, because of all the what? Because he's offensive. Oh. Yeah, okay. but it wasn't sexual harassment. It, yeah, was, it, it was just, he was, it was not just PC. The accent, yeah, it right. was just the accent and his, his. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And that's crazy um, because, you know, like there's so many characters that have little accents that yeah. are supposed to be represent a certain crew or whatever. Demographic but, or something. Right, right, yeah. right. So then maybe they could just replace him with. An actual Indian actor? He could. Hank admitted the voice is a little racist. Over the weekend, the paparazzi got to him, and he said, I think the documentary made some real interesting points. A documentary um, calling the problem with Apu, which is accusing him Oh, it's a whole documentary about it? It is on YouTube. The, whole documentary uh, an actual it. guy from India made it. I think he's American, but he was, he's... He's, oh, okay. He's net from that country, so he made that. So yeah. right, right, right. So uh, called know, it so, out. So the the problem. Yeah, but then with, it's like they, they, they're gonna have to go through the guy that's the B, the Mexican guy that's the B. You know, yeah, I'm like, yeah. There's so many different things. How you clean up the whole Simpsons and whitewash it? Well, I don't think the B is a regular character. No, he is. Oh, he's he's still you know, on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, like, where do you stop? Right. That's the problem. Is right because, when you go to PC, you lose some. You lose the math, art and the funniness. Right. right. And and like you know like. Clean Cleveland, like this is the Cleveland show. <laughs> He's a white guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. But that show's not even around. No, it's not. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, just See can't be funny saying. anymore. Well, I, I mean, as long as the poo's not whipping out his mini uh, <laughs> a poo, <laughs> he should be allowed to be on TV. Thank you very much. We get yeah. <laughs> Larry and Kathy J's Blazing Hit Radio live from a mile high, and now worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so Kathy and I are going to be at the grand opening of the new Green Solution in Glendale. Yes. Yeah, on Kentucky Ave. Yes. Uh, uh, December 9th. Yeah, it's Saturday. So uh, we want you guys to come and hang with us. There's going to be prizes, and we're going to cut the green ribbon, and uh, there'll probably be cake. Yeah, <laughs> finally. A clean cake is we, not We've have opened a bunch of three stores and we haven't had cake. So the right. fact that now you tease that, somebody better come through because Kathy J wants some cake. You know what? It's I've, the holiday season and there's no such thing as galleries. I did one, I think, without you. Uh huh. 
uh, which was for an opening, and they had a huge cake. Really? And it was the best cake. It would have been like your cake to the point. Oh, How dare God. you, Larry, have and it without didn't, Kathy? You it didn't was, bring it was, me a corner piece? No, there, and it was white cake with white frosting. Oh, my God. Oh, oh so oh, good. Shut up. And it was a huge one, too. Um, so that's from one to three. Yep, the grand opening with the ribbon cutting, and the ribbon cutting is going to happen at 2.20, featuring a special short speech from Jeff Allen and Sherry uh, Lib- 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 Liebhauser, yeah. Glendale Chambers of Commerce. I, I pronounce wow, it Liebhauser. Cool. Leibhauser? That's how I pronounce Leibhauser. it. Yeah, but there should have been some pronunciation in the copies there. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody should have broken that down or called her and say, how do you say your name? And she could say, it's Leisenhauser. When, uh, Leisenhauser. Leisenhauser. when the wife and I were driving up to Breckenridge, she, she's done this before and I just laugh. And she thinks I'm making fun of her, but I just love her saying it. But she's like, we're almost, she was on the phone. She's like, we're almost there. We're, we're just, uh, we're getting through the Eisenhauser. Uh, and I just, I just start laughing. I go, and I go, what is it? She's all, she doesn't want to say anything. Right. Right. Like, say like something's again. wrong. Something's yeah. wrong. What, what am I saying wrong? Eisenhauser. Um, when, you know, I posted something about Chris's mom passing and, uh, Kayla was in one of the comments and she said her well wishes and Chris and I were talking about Kayla and how him and her have never been on a flight, you know, Oh yeah, work together since right. they're both flight attendants. Right. Or they've also never flown on a plane that that person was working on. Yeah. You know, uh. so, um, we were just going through her Facebook page and going through her pictures and we we're just like, she is so adorable. Yeah. No, like, for real. Not only is she like pretty, but she's just like super sweet. And, um, her, her message to us was like, I don't know all the messages. I want to thank everybody that responded to that. Well, her sister said that she was like the popular girl in school, and you never guess it. But then for me, in my nerdy head, I thought, I got the popular girl. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I won, everyone. Well, if you're getting Write it down now, nerd, Jared you'll get Wiggins. the hot girl. Yeah. Hey, and to your credit, Wiggins, when we said, uh, my joke out there was, well, let's hope she's more Kayla than Wiggins. <laughs> and everybody said, he's handsome. So you got a little love. Yeah. From a nice. little love. It's like one comment for... Right. Well, it was Char that said it. Yeah. It was Char. <laughs> it was somebody it was on Char. the inner circle. And nobody throwing... else knew who you were. Right. They were throwing you a bone. <laughs> you didn't make... Right. Chris took a stack of stickers of us out there and Wig's not on the sticker. It's just you and I. Okay. Oh, they don't okay. know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No one knows who I am. It's Larry County <laughs> James Blaze Hit Radio <laughs> with Wig. <Wiggins>. Who? <laughs> Uh-huh. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. So um, right now, you know, is the holiday season. So a lot of people are getting packages delivered, especially right now. They do it year round, but especially right now for the holidays, packages are going to the porches and people are coming and stealing your packages. Right. And then uh, they say that there's like some way that I've seen. Did I see something like if there's a box you can Amazon's buy? Amazon's working on something. Oh, okay. And, and some they lock other it. places. Right. Or you can do the box outside. Some people are trying to work on access like the delivery driver will actually have a code where they can open up your door and put it in your house Oof. and shut it. Yeah, but that's going to be like a vetted program that they're working right. on. So, but you can't do a lot about it. You, I mean, we see the videos on TV of people that have their keys. Because I, I would just like to say this to all of you out there. If you think of, of stealing somebody else's packages... Most houses, even in the poor neighborhoods, have, cameras, have now. cameras. You can afford cameras now that really work night and day. They're like, thanks, Kathy. Now we'll just wear masks. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, why did you just say that, Larry? Oh. <laughs> I wasn't saying that. You're the one. Thanks, Larry. Now we'll just wear masks. But anyways, there's a really cool video that's out this morning because... The package thief didn't get caught by the camera. They got caught by the nanny as well. Okay, what? this video, I, I saw this over the weekend, and I'm glad that we're talking about it because I, I I don't know, man. I find things funny that other people don't find funny, but I just was like, ah, karma. Okay, so, so it's a nanny as a home security. That's the woman running up trying to steal, steal the package. The guy's in the getaway car. The passenger door's open. The woman grabs the package right here. She's about to run back into the car. There she is with the package running back into the car. The car's about to take off. Oh, she, the car takes off without her. The package gets in the car, oh. and then the nanny comes up to her. And you can tell she's, like, like hurt. <laughs> oh, right. And so the nanny just holds her until the cops get there. But, oh, my God. So the nanny did actually tackle her? Yeah. I don't think the nanny – I think she got hurt. Here, here's what I think happened. I think she literally got hurt from the car taking off and because she was halfway in the car, and then the nanny was chasing her, and I think that's when the guy drove off. She face plants it, hurts her ankle, and so when nanny's coming up, she can't walk away. She tries to get away, and she literally – Really just falls again. So I think she like hurt her ankle. You know what? Does it look like to you guys that the package is went in the car? No, the no. package went in the car. The guy took off. <laughs> yeah. 
Right. So the happened in Washington State, and and when she yelled at the person and started yelling, the nanny. That's when they ran to the car and was like, "Go, go, go!" Well, the person did go, 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 and didn't make sure that the passenger got in all the way. Uh, they're no longer friends. <laughs> yeah, right. They're friends. <laughs> Whoever got the package. <laughs> Uh, That's the kind of nanny I want. Yeah. Exactly. Meanwhile, your kids are inside playing with scissors. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, watch. There'll be a GoFundMe for the nanny. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Oh, I could, I could see that. You know the nanny mean? would deserve yeah. it. Yeah. No, so yeah. that's awesome. But Face the nanny plant. let the dog out and everything. Oh, yeah. That's not cool. That's what I was just about to say on the uh, thing that we were talking about, how they would be able to come in your house. Yes. Um, like, there'd be too many incidences that, like, oh, and then he accidentally let the dog out. Or, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That's they, just too weird. It's dangerous. Or you're just not expecting a package, and there you are naked, and then he walks in. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? <laughs> package delivery, ma'am. <laughs> Unless you're super hot, then that your would probably all sent, work out. Your sister sent you right, me, exactly. sent me to you to drop off this package. <laughs> My arms are getting weary. It's, it's too big to just go in your My slot. My back getting tight. <laughs> oh, the queen bridge <laughs> not. That used to be Kathy. Dude, I get so upset when people try to steal. When people break into other people's houses and steal from them and stuff, nothing irritates me more because you need to go get a job like the rest of us and suffer with some boss that you don't like and sit in traffic and know what it's like to earn a living. Like, right. it, it, it's like I just want, I want to strangle those people that steal from other people. Go steal from a corporate, but don't steal from normal people. Exactly. And if you believe, you know, the White House or whatever, you know, in the news, it's like, you know, the economy's doing better. It's like there's enough jobs for everybody. Go get your ass a job. Yeah, corporations are doing better, not so much the people right. of those yeah, corporations. Yeah, I understand, but I mean, there's the job rate is like the best it's ever been, the lowest job rate. You no, know? for yeah. sure. There's jobs available. Yeah. Right. And that do say what kills me about that is everyone so short-minded or, or and, and that it's like, oh, it's, it's Donald Trump who did that. Some people think, oh, Donald Trump had that. I was like, how about the guy who was there for eight years paying, <laughs> off, paying off the credit card debt, <laughs> yeah. trying to get us to, to be in a certain spot? He doesn't get any credit for the... No, people we're don't want to give him credit. Listen, we are going to give credit to Donald Trump and make a big deal about like the... Uh, stock market and we're gonna and the job numbers we're gonna give him total props before he gets impeached for what happened. <laughs> so fine, he's we'll give him that. Gonna get we're gonna give him that. Larry, he's not gonna get impeached. Whatever, Frank. I'm just telling you, he's, he's got plenty of people that are gonna take the rap for him. The president's not going down. We, eight years, Trump. You know what? I saw Frank naked in the locker room. Yeah, <laughs> leans right. Totally uh, leans uh, right. Uh, lean right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> totally. That's funny. Frank's kind of hung. Thank I mean, you. mostly thick, not right. lint. And again, I just want to point out, <laughs> I've been with Kathy a lot more than her husband, Mr. <laughs> Efficient, has been with Kathy. You know those little Coke cans, the little ones? Yeah. That's you, Frank. Thanks, man. The little one. Yeah. No, I'm more of a 12 ounce Larry. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see that video at blazinghitradio.com. Yep, we just threw it up. We also have to talk about the dude that snapped the picture at the Waffle House. What so happened? this drunk guy goes into the Waffle House to eat. Is this right? a joke? No, 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 hey, no, drunk no, guy no, goes no. into the Waffle but House to go, drink. The picture is going viral. So Alex is 36 years old. Wednesday night, he wanders into a Waffle House in South Carolina, and he is drunk. When he gets there, the only employee that's working there overnight, the Waffle House, is sleeping. had fallen asleep so in a booth. A picture of him asleep. There's the picture of the employee in the booth. What? I can't make out. What, where, where? It, this part's blurry. He's just asleep. So you can Where's see, their head? This is the employee. That's this a is baseball the hat. hat. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. He's got, but, and this is the only blurry one. Otherwise, there's the guy. So Alex, that's the drunk guy. He, di- he hopped behind the counter at the Waffle House and started cooking his own meal. Did he really? He cooked himself... What I, I mean, go for it, dude. A double Texas bacon cheeseburger melt with extra pickles. Well, that is awesome. I wouldn't even know if I would be able to do that. Like, how would you turn everything on? Or I, he, he must obviously have, knew must his have way known. around. He must or have maybe been it's a, just on. Yeah. The grill's I was gonna on. say the grill is always okay, on. That's crazy. And they have it all packaged, so you just grab what you want and put it in. I'd feel so nervous thinking that person was gonna wake up and be mad at me. And, and right, but he he took three photos back there. The fact that he had time to cook that whole meal okay. and the dude never woke up is hilarious. Here's my thing: if he paid and left money that's super cool you know what i mean like i don't know i don't want it like if he stole it you know that's not cool i don't think he probably stole it but eventually don't you wake the dude up and go i'd like to here's my ten dollars bye and the guy's like what yeah i just clean my own dishes too (laughs) you're fired no way there's no way i'd clean my own dishes you gotta wake up and do those (laughs) you're on the clock not me no 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 now i want a job there i did so good on the cheeseburger (laughs) i'm worthy of this one night i was i sort of got um you know pete's kitchen 
uh, there was this dude. Kitchen. There was a dude that was working there that was managing it, and uh, he was trying to be all like, "Hey, what's up?" And so I was just hanging out with him while he worked there one night, and it, and his some girl didn't show up, uh-huh. and Pete's Kitchen like got after the club crowded. Oh no, you they get crazy crowded. Right, you right. got to stand in line outside freezing, waiting to get in. Um, so I uh, worked. I, I worked <laughs> Wait, whoa, whoa, one whoa, night whoa, 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 whoa. at Pete's Kitchen like, for one night, and I got to keep my tips. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, me? it was one night, and I've, n- I've never been anything? a waiter. I wrote everything down. I didn't know any codes. I wrote everything down that every single person ordered. How many tables were you it working? It was a full night. Are you kidding me? It was me? a full night. And so, yeah, it was like, I, and I've always wanted to be a waiter. His arms are getting exactly. weary. <laughs> Back is getting tight. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. And then I picked out, so yeah, it was cool. Okay, so I'm just shocked. So were you over there, like, shaving the, la- the leg of lamb? No, 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 he, did, he ran the kitchen, I okay. did the table. So I was just a waiter, you know what I mean? And there were no mess-ups, no special. I'll have Pete's secrets. No, yeah, no, no, it no, actually went really it. well. And I, you know, it was kind of crazy because I was like, I needed the cash. So this was awesome. <laughs> you never yeah. saw that dude again, did you? No, because, no, no, he was... He was, it it he was, lost its, its its luster. Yeah, he was too... No, there's nothing so, going to happen there. So this text you can text us anytime by the way the android app has been adjusted uh and oh you can my that's the 328th time yes. the Wiggins has said it. yes but now now the update just happened so you can text or call us from the app itself and this text comes in saying they said he originally left after he ate but once he sobered up he went back to pay i don't know oh. uh, maybe you're getting to that kathy oh, okay, there you go. The story yeah, so yeah. so no, that's cool now i want waffle house really bad yeah. right i was thinking that this is great for waffle house because now i'm tr- craving one of those little steak sandwiches with the cheese and the pickles i'm God, oh, I'd so eat the good. hell out of some hash browns. Right? With, oh, my God. With Heinz ketchup all over them? Where's the nearest Waffle House? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> the one I, I used to go that. to. the hood, By baby. my house. Like, okay. it was so awesome. You'd be coming up from the club. You'd yes. get off on 84th. Waffle yes. House is right there. Pig out. Loved it. All you got to do is cross Washington. You're in a neighborhood. Your home's free. Sorry, I lived uh, I lived with my buddy Sheldon uh, off the apartments, townhomes there. You with his buddy Sheldon. Sheldon. We lived there, 80th in Washington. Oh, God. And you could go to the taco star, yeah. which was right next to taco the Waffle House. Right. It used to be good times. Oh, now it's shoot. Taco that was some good stuff. You What's get taco star? It's like amazing tacos. They got, even give you the green chili. <laughs> so good. All right, anyway. So, <laughs> 303-728-3420. We are going to have a Chris prize for you. Chris Oh, I'm not supposed to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, say, don't, don't do, do my friend. And you know what? One. When I've been on alone, my yeah. Christopher Walken's really coming through. See, you do it too. Oh. See, I'm not alone doing the Christopher Walken by myself. No, no, Whatever. I, I, but I, I'm not going to ta- do don't it. Don't take from him, Larry. I didn't. Let hey, him have something. You get that. Keep listening because coming up after this song, we're going to play some uh, love song by 311. We got uh, lunch for two at Jake and Joel's Barbecue Company, but you oh. can only win it when we tell you, and that's coming up right after this. We were already hungry. Larry and Kathy present. Turn it up. Turn it up. Okay, okay. Yes, I do. Blazing Hit Radio. All right. We told you that we got a prize for you. So if you call us right now, you can use the menu option or just use the number 303-728-3420. Call or 10. Uh, we got lunch for two at Jake and Joel's Barbecue located at Lowell's and Quincy in Buckley Avenue in Aurora. Can I just say... I'm the one that brought these guys on because the guy who owns that brings brisket over to the house. He's been doing it for like the past year whenever Mr. Fishin has a poker party. So you might have eaten it, Wiggins, but uh, he like cooks brisket. He's like nothing the better. man. Oh and my then, God, like, it's the, delicious. And so his <laughs> barbecue is on point. So yeah. on point that he left his normal job to start this because everywhere he took the brisket, people were like, dude, I would pay for this. So it's really cool that we're giving away it's lunch It's real for Kansas City barbecue oh, with hot so smoked brisket, pork belly brunt ends, jumbo sausages made from scratch with scratch sides. Are you salivating? Uh, like I am. You had me a jumbo sausage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we knew so, we would. Yeah, we knew. 303 Call or 10 right now. You are going to get the hook. Look up from Kathy's people at Jake and Joel's Barbecue. Hey, it's Larry. Kathy. And Wiggins. And you're listening to Blazing Hit Radio. 303-728-3420. Hello, who's this? Um, this is Claudia. Hi, Claudia. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. It's, it's crazy that you said your name's Claudia because I've told you guys about the lady who owned the stuffed animal store at Heritage Square. Yes. And her name was Claudia. And this is exactly oh. how she sounded. She was a southern lady, <laughs> and she had all white hair, and when you walked in the store, you couldn't see her because she looked like one of the stuffed animals. What? And she sold the original. That's not, that's not you, right? She sold the original cabbage no, patch dolls that were fabric that oh, were signed on the bottom. Those she, were she was the first person to carry all of them. Whoa! Right? Did you see the SNL American Doll skit? Oh, it was hilarious. No, no, no. So, Claudia, you are the caller ten, and you got the lunch for two at Jake and Phil's Barbecue Company. Yay! 
So we're gonna grab your we're gonna grab your info right now. We appreciate you streaming, letting Kathy J's Blazing Hit Radio app. All we ask is that you make sure you tell everyone that you got hooked up because you listen to Larry and Kathy J on the app, and make sure other people download the app. All right. I will, for sure. All right, so hold on one second. We're going to put you on hold and then grab your info. Don't go anywhere, okay? All right. All right, cool. Uh, we were talking earlier, Larry, about the uh, the guy who went and cooked him for himself at the Waffle, <laughs> Waffle House, House, and we got a call on that. Hello, who's this? Hello. Hey. Hey, guys, it's Paul. Hey, hey Paul. Paul. Hey, how you guys doing? Good, man. We're just uh, hanging in there, you know, another Bronco loss. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, hey, hey, just wanted to uh, just put out there. I know you guys were talking about that Waffle House. Um, so words on the street, the guy did not pay for the sandwich at first because he felt like if he cooked it, he shouldn't pay for it. And then he actually <laughs> came back to the shop and told him what happened and showed him pictures and paid for the meal. Uh, I guess uh, I guess the guy, the main manager of the of the Waffle House, the main manager was so happy that he actually offered him a job. Uh, he told him like you know like if you know how to work at all, you know, I appreciate you coming back. If you want the job, the job is yours. That's awesome. Uh, He's all. I'd just rather have a food yeah. credit. So so technically, the, nobody knew it was the perfect crime. He didn't have to go back right and pay for it. You know why he they did? They wouldn't review because the ca- there's ca- probably yeah. cameras, but they only would review that if something bad happened. Right, right, right. But I bet you he went back because. It started going viral on Facebook. Oh and he right! Knew, he knew people were going to oh, say, "Did right. you pay for it?" Right, right, right. And then you could get charged yeah, with exactly. stealing. Right. So it was a smart guy for him and to go back. All and these companies and all these companies have Twitter accounts and Facebook, so they yeah. would have found out about it regardless. Oh no, no, yeah, they sure. somehow, so. always do. Especially, I want to know what happened to that Burger King woman who's thrown the f bombs out. Oh right, the manager. Yeah, she cannot have her job. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? She just said, "You know what? Once you cross the line yeah, of swearing at the exactly. customer, go for it, because you ain't gonna have a job. So whatever you want to say, get it out now." And now we're still starving. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Paul, for filling us in on the details. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for listening, man. Make sure you tell everyone that Larry and Kathy are back and we have our own app. We really appreciate you streaming and listening, dude. Oh, definitely, man. Definitely. Appreciate you guys. Thanks. Thanks, bye, man. Paul. Hey, Listen uh, on the text line. Wiggins bye, bye. Christopher Walken gives me life. <laughs> totally cracks me up and makes my day. Um, we were just saying that we, you know, we're in North Denver technically, but it's high, low, 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 whatever this is called. We're in the middle. Yeah. Whatever this, but there's a name for this. Yeah, the, this is the, the low high, low high, lower highlands. Right. So there's all any hope we would have of a burrito lady stopping by just went away. We gentrified <laughs> her out of here. No. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Federal, okay. federal. Right no, 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 no. No, 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 no. We need to get into this, and we will here in a minute. Uh, I actually posted that last night that a lot of people are moving out of Colorado because of it because of just the price the and all that other stuff over 700 likes on this post and people just blowing up the comments so I think we should, we gotta talk about that here you in know, a minute and I, have, I uh, have a friend that moved to somewhere mm-hmm. and we'll find out where he was because he's like it's like living in Denver 10 years ago whoa oh. so where I'll find is out that? I don't know we might lose people if we say this <laughs> oh, they can listen not to if, us anyway not yeah, if they you can say Cheyenne, Cheyenne Wyoming no 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 it's, I don't know where it is I'll oh, look it up okay that's cool time for another hit this my station Please and hit radio Blazing It Radio, Larry Uliberry, Kathy J. Wiggins. Now, more Larry and Kathy. Yeah, exactly. All day long, too, at yeah. that. Yeah, we're going to talk more. You know, we're just getting into the vibe, you know. You know, just going to get comfortable, you know, relax, call us, whatever. We'll talk. And if you've listened to Larry and Kathy in the past, you know all about the Christmas wish and, and what a, a huge impact it is that you guys have on the community. Right. Uh, when we left uh, regular radio, they were like, everybody was like, oh, um... Are you guys going to do Christmas Wish? We're like, we're sure hope so. And when Green Solution came through, it was so awesome. Mm-hmm. Because we, we that would have meant we would have like missed a year or something like that. He, and yeah. uh, so now we won't. I think what's so crazy is that the marijuana just overall gets a bad rap, but the Green Solution is all about the community. And so when we came up to them and said, hey, we have this huge program that we do every year, you're already invested in, like, in yes. and Kathy, they were like, yes, we're doing it. So right. so we got a great budget, and so we're going to be able to help everyone this year. And the wishes are coming in. So if you'd like to write a wish, you can go to blazonhitradio.com uh, slash Christmas wish, and uh, you can get all the details there. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, you know, just make it a couple paragraphs. Tell us about 
somebody that you know that isn't going to be maybe in the best situation right about now and could use a little help with some bills or maybe mm-hmm. it's like one thing specifically or maybe just toys for the kids. Include their contact information and your contact information. That's very, very important because sometimes like we'll get a great those, letter yes. and then yeah. we don't know how to get a hold of anybody. And I had that happen. I had a great letter and I was like, Ugh, and then they, they happen to be the person that only sent one email out and never checked their email again. <laughs> yeah, right. It could it's be like, that yeah. situation. Right. Remember we la- there was one year the person sent their email from the library oh, right. and they never went back. Right. And we were like We were uh, walking around the library with presents. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> anyone? Looking anyone? for a Sam? A Sam three two seven? So I, I haven't really updated Larry and Kathy you on this, but we also set up a GoFundMe. Right, and so because a lot of people want to know, hey, how can I help out the wishes? They're in good spots. How can they help those who aren't? Yeah, we've done it before. Every every year, people are like moved by the letters and they want to help. And some people listen to a letter and specifically go, "Yo, I have to help that person." And then some people are just like, "Please take whatever I can give you, so you can answer more letters." Right. So either way, we're cool. But now that we have a GoFundMe, it's all the better. Yeah, very cool. And so we actually set up the GoFundMe, and it's it's on the same it's on the bottom of the wish. So when you'll get the info on the wish and how you can donate or write a wish, but then right there at the bottom you see the GoFundMe link, and you can literally we've had donations and we we got two hundred dollars right now. Yay. So and then we haven't even promoted it at all. So it's really awesome that that people are already jumping on there and doing that. So the other way you can get info is if you text wish the word wish to three zero three seven two eight three four twenty. All of that information will come back to you nice. uh, and it bounce the link and all that, so you can find it an easy way word all right so uh to all the people that are new to colorado hi to all the people that are leaving so sorry we're gonna miss you Bye. <laughs> have you heard the new the new story the new statistics that are coming out uh-uh. colorado residents are moving out at a record pace mm-hmm. biggest pace in over a decade it's first drop in over a decade and the number of people um, arriving from other states and leaving are at a record high okay so wait a minute like where's everybody going they can't afford to live here. Well, no, I, I know you, that. You, you I'm just saying, I'm saying, where are they going? Larry, didn't you say you knew someone yeah, yeah, who I'm actually moved, that moved to another spot? Yeah, it's uh, Mike Wiley. So we posted that on our, our Facebook Larry and Kathy J page. I mean, and, and I know, Kathy, you have the statistics, but yeah. it says uh, they raise the cost of living here because everyone is moving out here, but they don't raise the wages so people can't actually live. I was born and raised here in Colorado, and it's not the same uh, anymore at all. Traffic is... As we all know, traffic is ridiculous. People are rude AF. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the list goes on. I just want a state back. I just want our state back, and it's only getting worse. This will probably be my last year in Colorado. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, there was an, in- an increase of 15.4% in wages, because that person was talking about the wages not going up. Uh-huh. Um, the wages rose the hourly average wage, $25. God. That seems fine to me. I'll take twenty five dollars an hour. It rose three dollars more to twenty five, or like almost four dollars more to twenty eight ninety four. But the increase, even though it's only, it, they're saying fifteen percent is not a enough. good increase. It's not for, enough for rent for and as the, much as the rest of the city is growing. Cost of living. Um, and then you know what happened was people were like initially were like, well, it looks like I'm going to have to move to like one hundred thirtieth, and it was like okay. And then yeah. people were like, it looks like I'm going to have to move to one hundred fortieth. Looks like I'm going to move one hundred fiftieth. Now they're like. I have to move to 278th. Um, And now you're out of the state. You know what I mean? Right. The highest on record, they're seeing that there's been an increase in the outs. So even though 10,000 more people moved uh, last year than they did in 2015, so about 193,000 people have moved to Colorado, about 223,000 have moved out. So even though people are moving in, the same amount's moving out, and we've never had the same amount moving out. Right. So it's kind of crazy. So it's like we're swapping some new old people out for some new people. But then again, then the population's kind of staying the same, so it's not going to like more traffic, congestion. Right, right, right. But still. Yeah, yeah. Um, dang. I want to say, like, I can't find the guy's name. Um, I'd imagine it's Wyoming or New Mexico. I mean, I want to say Wyoming. Like, I think Wyoming is the same way as as Denver was. I mean, it's up and coming. Yeah, it might be a little bit smaller town, but it will explode in no time. Maybe we should go buy some land out there and wait twenty years. Oh, and yeah. then, and then. No, no, no. We should buy land at two hundred and seventy eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Where, that's probably Wyoming. Well, no, that's- it's like we were talking about last week. People said that now they're moving to Tacono. Like when I lived up in Erie, there was nothing up there past one hundred twentieth. Nothing. When you hit the Highway. Right. There was nothing. And then you knew that Dakota was where the trailer parks were, and they had a bomb ass 
truck stop <laughs> restaurant. Johnson's Corner. You, no, no. Oh. Johnson's Corner's way up north. Oh, okay. Tacono's right after Erie. But, you know, there wasn't anything there. So the fact now that Wiggins says there's beautiful homes in Tacono, mm-hmm. I don't know how to even deal with that. Mm-hmm. Like, and they're what? actually they're actually affordable. That That's the thing. Well, and yeah, for, for now. now yeah, for now. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why we have to buy something, some land. You know, when, when like, there's still a lot of, like, uh, little tiny houses around Denver. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And so I think those are the people that are, like, seeing those bigger houses go in that go sideways and they're rectangular and tall yeah right and so uh it just it looks the neighbor those neighborhoods look like people with bad teeth like there's some good teeth and then there's, <laughs> oh, some yeah. bad there's, teeth. The, there's that one tooth that just looks right. a little Snaggle discolored yeah. Well, yeah they got veneers and they yeah. just didn't they couldn't afford the whole thing but like you know it's that whole argument it's like people with a whole gentrification argument and you know how do what is that argument you know yeah. what i mean it's well, like it's not fair could you imagine being a native of colorado your family's from here you've you know you guys have worked you paid your taxes in colorado and now you can't even afford to live here it does feel like a slap in the face but i don't know how to get around it i know and then like because there's like obviously some people that have thrived and they are doing it killing right. it whatever their career may be or whatever this, right. this text comes in 303-728-3420 on the yolo rum line good morning guys my husband and i are leaving because it's so expensive and people here are getting ridiculous uh that's the key word today uh ridiculous uh we are originally <laughs> from florida and moved here because the income was great but now it sucks because everything else is going up we're moving to texas um so wait when they say everything's going up what do they mean like as far as like Groceries or like just restaurant I, I think prices? Everything. I or? think everything. I mean, if you're just looking at gas and you're looking at the food and you're looking at. I know, but ga- there's going to be gas and food wherever yeah, you but, go. But if you're paying expensive rent, the last thing you can afford is gas food. And food. Gas and food. Right. Yeah. Well, then learn to cook. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> also, ramen. yeah, you can't be anywhere near close to where you got to be, so you need gas because right. you're going to be living up in Sterling or something. Right. Like my cousins from back home in upstate New York, I've had two sets of cousins and they're both like, we love Colorado. We want to come out and blah, blah, blah. Blah, and I'm like, well, uh, you uh, you could live, you could live in Lyman, you right. know, compared to what, you know, cause right. they don't make much out there, but it's okay because in upstate New York, you can have rent that's still eight seventy five. Right, 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 you right. Know, rent control. Two bedroom. Right, right, right. right. So it's, like, just, it's just getting crazy. Well, so let us know what you think. You can give us a shout out with feature in the app or text us or call us 303-728-3420. Yeah. And on the app, what Wiggins is talking about is the menu section. You can just leave us a comment, record it, hit send. So you don't have to, you know, bother calling. Yeah. It's so much easier. And I right. love the comments on it. And you can, every call, here's what's funny. Every shout out comes in, you hear. Oh, so people, are, are, on? people oh. are waiting. At, people are waiting at a stoplight, and that's when they record the shout out and send it into us. So I just, <laughs> we should have people. If you if you feel that you're going to get into a road rage, just hit record. We'd like to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> send us your road rage to three zero three seven two eight three four twenty. This text comes in. Yeah, it's crap. I work fifty two to sixty hours a week, and I can't afford even pot. No, a pot to piss in. Oh. 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 <laughs> Well, it's stopped. Where's the? Oh, it's at yeah, the don't, top. Okay. Don't, pee in, don't pee on your pot. Don't pee on your pot. I was like, I was like, they can't afford pot. What kind of world is this? Uh, no. no. Uh, Although just, Green Solution has great deals no. now. Just pee on the ground. Yeah. Right, right. And then outside. This person says, and I'm, I'm a grown adult, and I can't afford to live on my own. Wow. Yeah. yeah I, that's I, a lot of people. That's so common you, that people are still living with their family. And then, like, you know, some cultures, it's kind of their culture. Like, you know, you see Italians staying together for a long time. Yeah. And maybe Hispanic families staying together for a long time. So it's not uncommon, but it's like now mandatory. No, real for real. Like, I used to be Communal like... Communal living. Oh, my God. How many people live in that house? And now right. I get it. Right. You're <laughs> you like, know? 30 people going to Costco at once. What's happening? You're taking all there. the samples. You know what? When I bought my house in Old Thornton, you know, like with the... Old with the trucker, Thornton. With tr- oh, yeah, Old Thornton. Thornton. Trucker Greg, you know? Yeah, there could be a Whataburger up there. Yeah. With trucker Greg. And the, the economy wasn't really... It was it was failing, you know, mm-hmm. when, when I had the house with Trucker Greg. But someone... I think it was my sister. No, was, the economy was thriving. It was your economy. Right. Was it was failing. my personal economy right. that was downhill so it was my dad and my sister they were like whatever you do don't get rid of that house you know because even though the house isn't i mean it's the that's startup house. house i love my house i but, love it um they you know they were like that's the one thing my dad was like keep the real estate mm-hmm. right you know like even though the economy is not good right now i need you to keep that real estate because he grew up here or you know he raised us here and he still 
like it kicks him in the butt. It would kick him in the butt when he thought about the fact that he should have tried to get a second house right? With for the rent and the real estate because, you know, it's just like there's opportunity, but you got to have the money to make the money, and we never had it. He's but all, that- someday, Kathy, you'll be a slumlord. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then so so when it happened, Trucker Greg was feeling so guilty because he had cheated on me. He gave you that. That, that I was like, I'll absorb the debt, which was his motorcycle and stuff, uh-huh. and that's all the new skinny stick with the soul that he was cheating on me with liked was his motorcycle. I was like, I'll pay for the motorcycle. Just let me absorb the debt. Quick clean, quick deed the house to me and we're cool. And he did. You're like, I'll pay for the motorcycle. No helmets. <laughs> yeah, no helmets. You ain't getting Right, helmets. you and her, no helmets. <laughs> but you know, I mean, that was the smartest thing that I ever did. Right, right, right. You know, and uh, so it's just... Uh, then you ain't going to gentrify Kathy out of Thornton. <laughs> yeah, don't no, worry. I'm a Thornton girl through and through. My mom still lives up there and she still has the truck I bought when I was 16 years old. No and way. She drives it all the time. That thing's a, a 1993 Toyota pickup up that this, yeah, we remember. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Really we, telling we, us we, the first right. time. Yeah, we would drive back and forth. We really, hold on, because we would, <laughs> Kathy and I would, would, would drive past each other at five in the four in the morning. <laughs> she had her little pup, uh, what was it, your pup pickup? I had like a 1987 pup, my grandpa's pup. It was pathetic. You guys had matching primered out trucks. It was the oldest car ever, and it was like falling apart. Like I was a state, an armpit stain on the highway. I would, Nobody it, looked at me. We'd be at the station, and all of a sudden, here would come Wiggins pulling up in his. Yeah. Kathy. Pull up, pull, up, pull, up, pull, up, pull up in hers, and then the limo would drop me off, and I, I'd be like, oh, hey, guys, let me get the car key. That's about key. it. Yeah. Let me get the car key me and make sure you guys got in, and then I was like, what are we having for breakfast? My I, treat. I Whatever will, you're buying, Larry. Yeah. Yep. I will say that when my first day as an intern, Kathy was not uh, was not there, and so no, I didn't, I didn't know what she drives. She's all, I won't be there to protect you from Larry. <laughs> yeah. He's going to try to kiss you. He's going to wind <laughs> you. Please. I actually completely forgot it was your first day and didn't tell anybody. Oh, no. I was sitting down in the lobby. And, I know. And I anyway, 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 that's another story. So uh, uh, second, I went downstairs, and I, w- I was the different you, intern. You, you were coming to go puff. You were coming right. downstairs to go do your normal. <laughs> I saw him, routine. and I go. I did uh, what? Uh, what was that? Hello? Uh, no, no, you did. No, Larry, no I was like, mean to interns. If, I was if he doesn't mean. know you, he just he just walks. I was past like, you. what? Who? Who yeah, are and you? So he just walks by. I was like, is this even approved? Yeah, and, and, and then and, yeah. yeah, and so then I was like, well, you can't go up yet. Yeah. This was an intern's last day, and he had wanted to smoke with me. No, no, no. This you were by yourself. You weren't with him at that point. <laughs> oh. You were by yourself, and literally oh. just, that was another. That was intern. another. That was another. No, day. no, that was the same day. That was later after the show had ended. This was like this was five thirty in the morning. You walked down. No one was there. Kathy didn't come down. She's, she's not like, answering my text. You get off the elevator. You go to your car, and I go, "Oh shoot!" I was like, "Okay." And then he comes in. And you go, "All right, just come with me." And I go, "I go, oh, all right." And so we're walking, and Larry's, oh Larry's got these these calves. <laughs> yes, okay, it looks like my knees swallowed grapefruit. <laughs> yes, and so for real, you have strong, defined <laughs> zero calves. to hero. Yeah, right. So, look at that. That's look at amazing. That. So my goal was to calves. You could put a. Uh, a tabletop on this. I one. know, like that's like a softball coming out the back of your calf. So my goal, was, my it's goal was two things. I said I gotta let him know I'm funny. I was like, because I, I think they're I gotta funny. Gotta let him know I'm funny. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> gotta you tell think Larry joke. will like me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. And and I said, and I gotta smoke with him. I was like, even if I get fired today, I was like, that, that's 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 my goal. <laughs> Great you know, wig. So big we're, goals. So buddy. we're we're we've been smoking. <laughs> Ever since, and so we're wa- we're walking down the hallway after we get up in the elevator, and he's done, and I'm walking behind him. He's walking from me to his fast Larry walk. Oh no, he does. And, he and so I go, fast. I go, geez, Larry, I was like, your calves look a lot big or sound a lot bigger on the radio. Yeah, they look ah. a lot bigger than they are on the radio. Yeah, and I was That's like, cute. and he kind of laughed, and I was like, all right, I'm in. I was like, I smoke pot. Let's smoke pot. Let's smoke. <laughs> I'm all just shot her guy and sit in the back of the room and look at this other intern what they did. Anyway, so my point of that is when we got out the second day and I met Kathy and I saw that she had her little pup truck. <laughs> that it was. I was like, huh, I fit in perfectly. I was like, I smoke pot and I drive a piece of crap car just like Kathy. I was like, Dude, <laughs> my hood was being held down by a bungee cord through the front grill, yeah. like that thing. But you know what? I love that little pup. It was my grandpa's car. Meanwhile, Larry's at Larry H. Miller Nissan picking up yeah. his third vehicle. <laughs> I hate you, Larry. Um, no, no, because right after that, you finally got on no, board. No, 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 no. It oh. took about another 10 years. But that's okay. What do we... <laughs> no, it wasn't 10 years because you had that horse. Yeah, right. And that yeah. lived for right. how long? At least it was five, five and a five, half, right? Right. And he pulled a little wagon. That was cool. Oh, God. Uh, you looked th- Amish. This text, uh, Larry, rent is expensive, and we both can cook, but we are left to the juggle all of the necessities, uh, the other necessities. We have no family here, so we are moving closer to home. Oh, that's cool. So, I mean, I understand that. 
Uh, so, yeah, I get it. So give us your shout out or give us a call on the Yellow Rum line, 303-728-3420. Everything's accessible in the app. Just hit that, those three little horizontal yeah, give lines. Us a shout out. Uh, give us a shout out. I love the shout outs. They're always so good. Say something um, naughty. So give us a call and then we'll be right back after this. And now, hey, hey, it's time hey. for. To the Dolphins, really? Oh. Yeah. Oh, what was the final score, Larry? Thirty-nine nine, or was it? I don't know. You can you can say it. Oh, I think it was thirty-five. I'm Larry Yulebrand Sports. I don't have to know. <laughs> Kathy and I get so scared to correct you because no, you're all. This no, is my don't, segment. No, here's was, the thing. Oh, I right. need you guys to get the real sports <laughs> information out there. And here's the thing. I kind of figure that my commitment to this segment okay. is the same commitment I have to being. Plant based. I'm flexible. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, sometimes I'm going to know some stuff, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm going to eat like a cake with an egg in it. Sometimes right. I'm not. Did he just say sometimes he's going to know some stuff about yeah, sports? I do, but I know. Well, I mean, I know. Oh, okay. Shut up. You guys know I know some stuff, but like the Dolphins. I know enough to know that that was really sad. What did you say the score was, Larry? 39-9? 35 to 9. Oh, okay. So, but, but dude, two safeties that haven't happened back, uh, two safeties in a game. The record was three safeties in a game. That hasn't happened, the two safeties God. since 1986. And we gave, we gave up two. Turn up this music. This is all. And that's when the Broncos knew it was over. <laughs> it no was lie. over. They were beaten by the Dolphins, which always reminds me of... Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. <laughs> Laces out. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so... Um, what, what went wrong? Why I, was I it so horrible? I, I was in the plane. I didn't oh, watch okay. the game. What I do now is I don't watch the game. I watch social media. Because <laughs> that's funny. Right, because so, social media was saying... What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> okay. I did a share a gif on what you're thinking about the Broncos right now. Funniest crap ever. I'm just saying, I was like, I posted that on Larry and Kathy J's page, and oh. then you copied it. I was oh, like, I was oh, like, you did? Yeah. I did it. And then we well, had. Well, we, great minds think alike, so we're always, mm. we're going to double up on some stuff. So I want to th throw up those gifs so you guys can see them. Because, Kathy, I'm not sure if you saw them, but before I do, uh, and I, as I pulled up, the Denver Post says this Do the Broncos lack the talent to win at the NFL level, or have the Denver players not responded to the coach? Yeah, I think it's a coaching issue. Uh, we uh, ourselves have had some coaching issues. And, uh, you know, <laughs> everybody you got, has coaching you, issues, right? You got to make some play changes and you got to fix it and you got to yeah. get over it and you got to put that egos aside. Yes. And what's best for the team? Yes. And I feel like yeah. that we, I feel yeah. like we got the best players on the team. We got a coach over there that's causing us to not run the right plays that we need to execute. True, and we right. keep telling him we want to run these plays. Yeah. yeah. But everybody, yeah, everybody's faced that situation where all of a sudden there's a new guy and it's like he does things differently and yeah. you're like, huh, is this how that, you know, that's kind of was our situation. They brought in a bad coach when we were in regular radio and we were like, hey, huh, hey. Hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's right. not the players. Just because we don't like the two coaches doesn't mean it's the players, okay? We are still playing at the top of our game. Okay, does anybody have any thought or credence to my suggestion about getting Peyton's brother here? I know you said that he maybe isn't as good as Peyton, but don't you think he'd be better than who we have? Bigger issues. I think he'd be better than who we have. I think and he's probably still got some good miles on him. You can't underestimate. There's a guy. Bigger issue, old. If you, but all right, when we took Peyton, we had a defense. Yes. We had a semi-decent running team, game. We had, we had, all, yes. All, all we had, yes. We had amazing tight ends. We had amazing receivers. Now you could bring in that quarterback, but unless you got the right music to go with you guys, <laughs> it's not going to be flawless. So you know right. what I mean? You're right. So, yeah. Ah! <laughs> it's, just, it's just so frustrating. Yeah, and, and the thing is, uh, this all is because of one thing. It's because we've been so spoiled that we've never been those fringe teams that were always like losing every season. Right. You know what I mean? So we've drank from the well too many times. Right. And so this is really hard for us to take. This is like would be like Americans losing Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's, it's just a weird out-of-body experience. <laughs> it's not us. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really tough to see some of the responses because in that post, or, and probably the one that you did, uh, some of the every like 10th post is somebody like laughing. Because oh, they're yeah, not no, a Bronco no, no, fan. For sure. There's okay, so, people, so it, right, I like, said, enjoy it. I said, yeah. describe the Broncos game in a gif. And you have to see these to really enjoy them. So go to the Facebook Larry <laughs> and Kathy J or, page. Or send one to us now at 303-728-3420. Yes, even better. What yeah, is yeah. that dolphin doing to Hank Hill? There's a dolphin hump in Hank <laughs> what Hill. What the hell? Um, let's see. We're going to go through <laughs> all these. Hilarious. Yeah. yeah, again, you can send those to us, too.
303 uh, There's uh, Jeff Goldblum from Jurassic Park when he goes by the giant pile, pile of, of dinosaur <laughs> crap. <laughs> yeah. He's, and he's, it, it just all it's slow. a backup shot. Yeah. Throw in the damn towel for the guy from Rocky. Right. Uh, leave me alone to die. And uh, one of the Disney characters, Broncos fans, be like Homer Simp- Simpson disappearing into the bushes. They're just good. You have to go see them for yourself just to really enjoy them. More cinnamon to us right now. You know what? I was conflicted. I like the Minions one. He was, goes to kick the ball and ends up kicking in the other Minion. I, I was conflicted when people were... Uh, Sending ones where they were laughing, like, do I like that one? And I was like, I guess you participated. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, no, some people were sending in just like Ron Burgundy laughing, like, ha ha. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that was him. That was him as Anchorman trapped in the phone booth. And he's all, I'm trapped in a case of emotions. That was him being uh, oh. upset. Oh, upset. Yeah, but bad. there was yeah, plenty yeah. of people laughing. Trust me. Yeah, yeah that was where he was crying because Baxter uh, <laughs> was kicked over the edge by Jack oh, Black. That was horrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. But I mean, it, got, it, looked so fake that it looked so fake that it was funny. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? That was funny. Oh, man. I don't know. It's, it, either way, it was not oh. a good day in sports. But there was other things that happened besides the Broncos lost. Larry, did you no, hear Chris? Of course. Did you hear Chris was. Collinsworth? Yes, absolutely. Did you hear him on Sunday? Did any? Did you catch him when he said uh, at the end of Sunday Night Football last night, it didn't make much more sense to Al, Al Michaels either. Uh, he was talking about how to take the land from the man to win football game. Okay, watch. Okay. You got, okay, you, wait, wait, wait. First off, tell Larry Uliberry on sports who Chris Collingsworth is. I know who that is. Who is, who is it? it? He's a famous uh, side commentator. Okay. Side commentator? I mean, a uh, center commentator? No, center just, commentator? Uh, the background commentator. Say, background commentator? He's the main commentator. Main commentator? He's the host. <laughs> He's the host. Either way. He's the commentator? And what does he He's, do he, as the commentator? He, he the, commentates. He hates the Broncos. I'll tell you that. Yeah, all right. Oh, he does hate yeah, the Broncos. He does, this is true. But, okay, so this, this was his comment. And I love a saying that Chris Richard has, the defensive coordinator of the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> you have to take the land from the man. Take the land from the man in front of you. If you're going across the line of scrimmage, we win. If you're going backwards away from the line of scrimmage, they win. Tonight, Seattle took the land from the man. That may be an original. I've never heard that before. I've never heard of it. <laughs> Most of the stuff we heard is stolen from somebody, but that, that could be... Oh, no, the see, land was stolen. Even Absolutely. those guys smoke pot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I see. It just sounds bad. I get it. But the, it wasn't but the really theory, that bad. The theory right. of football yes, and gaining get in, ground. Get in their space. Yeah, gaining ground. Right. Hey, but play the beginning of that clip again. Okay. Because I clearly hear him call one of the players Shart. What? I love a saying that... Chris Richard has the defense. His oh name God. is Shart. The Seattle His Larry. last name is Shart. The things Larry hears in right? that. Well, exactly. I, you don't want to hear the player's yeah. name. You all know the player's yeah. name. So you're like, oh, that's. I don't uh, think it, I think it's kid, Richard. Kid in school that was always like, like interrupting the teacher while she was trying to give the lesson because you heard something yeah. and wanted to stop <laughs> down. Larry was the kid where they said, we're going to learn health class today about this. We don't want any laughing or any jokes. <laughs> right, and Larry's all, ah, vagina. <laughs> <laughs> They're all, we're going to talk about the Native Americans today pitching a tent. Oh, my God. See? Okay. He hears something different than the rest of us. Oh, my God. It's uh, called a teepee. His name is Shart. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I, I posted something up also on our page. I said, maybe there's a chance. There's a slim chance we could make it into the playoffs. The Chiefs aren't doing that good. Raiders aren't doing that good. Oh uh, there's no way. We would and get killed. Yeah, it would, it's, be hard. It would be We wouldn't laugh. I think I Donald is- Trump has a better shot of avoiding impeachment yeah. than we have of making the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> I like woke up yesterday and just started going about my normal business. Usually, I mean, I, I look forward to Sunday. It's a thing. It's an event. Right? It's, Even, we've grown up every Sunday. Yes, day, watching making, the Broncos. Right, having people right. over, Good whatever. Good or bad, you took the bad, but this is a bad, bad. I don't think we've ever been this bad. We haven't. No, no, I really and, don't think we have. And so much so that the, the people across the street from me, they have huge, like the family comes over every Sunday and they're watching football. They cook and everything. Yeah, there's usually like so many cars that I have to like make sure that I can get out of my driveway right. kind of thing, right? Yesterday, one car. Whoops. There was one car there. I was like, whoa. Yeah, the grocery stores are now full. Traffic is that bad. Sucks, it's like a, right? ra- it's like a regular day. Back to live. Right. Yeah, that so. sucks. All right, well. I'm Larry Uliber on Sports. Coming up next on the next edition of Larry Uliber on Sports, yeah. uh-huh. you guys don't think I know stuff. Did you know the NFL try to offer the players $100 million to get them to sign something that said they wouldn't kneel during the what? during the flag, and uh, the pro, the 
players didn't go for it. Good. Uh, uh, yeah, so they, they were uh, promising to take that money and give it to two African-American causes uh-huh. and in lieu of them not... Kneeling, a hundred million to those two charities. Uh huh. So, but I mean, the, the NFL, the players are like, it's not enough. It's not in, until we get justice for the racial. The whole uh, reason we're doing the yeah, kneel for sure, right? About uh, cops killing people for. Meanwhile, those charities are like, what? Right. What? You know, <laughs> right, right, for sure. And that message gets lost in the bigger picture because everybody wants to throw everybody under the bus or not to go too deep down the rabbit hole. But Trump this weekend cri- was critical of the FBI, saying that they're all his, right. He's trying to throw everybody under the bus. Okay. It's desperate times now. So. Now, so there's a lot of people saying, how can you be so critical of the players kneeling and disrespecting the flag when the FBI, you're just as critical of them and, and almost worse with your it's comments? It's, it's, it's like, whatever, He's dude. doing anything at this point, so anybody's free game for him, and it's like, it's getting in. It's closing in. It's pretty crazy. Uh, the gifs are coming in about the Broncos. Keep them sending in. 303-728-3420. Uh, we got uh, <laughs> That's seven. 11. Stranger, 11. 11. Sorry, yeah. Stranger Things. You yeah. know what? She should do a show with seven. Seven of nine from Voyager, and they'd be seven eleven. That's what I. Yeah, that's why I said eleven at first. I'd be right. Like, All right. Voyager. Three zero three seven two eight. Welcome. Keep sending us those gifs and those pictures. You can also text the word wish to that number three zero three seven two eight three four twenty. Get all the info on the Christmas wish and how you can help. And if you'd like to donate, uh, instead of writing a letter, you can also have a link there that goes straight to the GoFundMe. And that's Larry Ulibarri, and I'm sports. The number one movie in the country. Me, you love me. I love you so much. But this time, something's different. I'm gonna ask MJ to marry me. <gasps> this time, Spider Man's black. Aw, oh, yeah. Bigger. Oh my god, Peter, it's so thick. That's right, baby. Batter. <coughs> yeah, everybody knows I'm down with Mary Jane. Try some of this. I call it the Green Goblin. Bitter. I got hands on the signal when I can see <laughs> him. Ain't that a bitch? This summer, Spider-Man is Peter Darker. Hey, Spider-Man. Love the new suit. Thanks, baby. It's Shanja. Now playing in theaters everywhere. <laughs> oh, dude, I Bigger, love... yeah. <laughs> blacker. Better. Uh, Kathy saw that Spider-Man. movie like 10 times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Front row, 3D glasses. She's yep. watching on Netflix and <laughs> Blu-ray every she day. She knows every line in that movie. Totally. No. I had to get the digital version, the Blu-ray version. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. waiting for Universal to make a ride out of it. You Yeah, I, I mean, I'd go there. We have to go back Girlfriend. to Universal again because, uh, and, and you, Larry, you've talked about setting up the contest and, and figuring yeah, that out. Yeah, we want to take a bunch of you guys are, you know, just take a, a some winners and go out there and do what we do out there and that's just have fun and ride rides and eat bad food they have jimmy fallon trip through new york now there yeah that's new and they have the fast and the furious ride i don't know if that's opened yet i know that they're working on it and i saw some previews online but it looks so sick you literally do street racing side by side with uh with vin diesel right and then i guess in the ride you hit paul walker Oh, come on. Too soon? Uh, yes, too soon. There's not, there's not even okay, a... Okay, here's what I, sucks. I was say, there's no, not a joke for that. Okay, wait a minute. There is always a joke for everybody who dies. It eventually comes, and then people can joke a little bit. But it's like, Paul Walker was so good-looking, people are like, it'll be a 20-year moratorium. Yeah, something, because he was so loved. Like, right. you know... No, no, um, and it was, uh, that goes to tell you, like, the guy could have been the biggest jerk ever, but it's that damn smile and those blue <laughs> eyes. You oh, know what I mean? So oh, Larry, sexy. you were devastated by it. Well, no, no, I discovered him. You did? Yeah. Didn't you see the movie Pleasantville when he, he was the Reese oh, Witherspoon's jock boyfriend? He was, and he was so cute. I fainted. I was like, <laughs> what? I only There's two guys that I reacted that way to that are stars. Him and Hayden Christensen, uh, even though the, he, those movies sucked, he was pretty hot. No, no, no. Three guys. Oh, Ryan Philby. No, four guys then. <laughs> uh, oh, oh uh, Joe Jonas. No, okay. Uh, Nick five Jonas. Guys then. Uh, Harry Styles. No, uh, six who? guys then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you were the first... To recognize, oh, um, Tatum Channing in the Mountain Dew Channing commercial. Tatum. Channing Tatum in the Mountain Dew commercial. Larry was like, "Who is that guy?" Years before, it before was like he it, even became an actor. He right, was just was, this good-looking dude, and then he was in that video. You should see that the commercial. Look up uh, Channing Tatum's uh, Mountain Dew commercial because it was he cool. gives he gives a smize. If you don't know what a smize is, oh, by the way, Tyra Banks is coming back to America's Next Top Model. Oh, I can't yeah. wait. Um, but she uh, talks about you know how you smile with your eyes, and he has this dope ass thing he does with his eyes and the camera zooms in and yeah. 
and yes. he he just does this sexy thing, and I was like, "Who's that guy? A star is Who's born." Who's that guy? Who's I just thought it was a guy? cool, yeah. I just thought it was a cool stunt how he flipped the car and grabbed. Okay, the play the commercial too. because she obviously can't remember how amazing no, no, that smile okay. was. We have a lot right. of other stuff to get to. Oh, uh, we did have a text three zero three seven two eight three four twenty. Uh, we have a few that I want to get to, but one of them says, uh, "What about Santa? Can he come on today?" Oh. So, so what? What's up with Santa? Are we going to get him in the studio? Well, only if you have the right music. He doesn't come in. Oh, that's What's definitely this? not that's the right it. music. That's not the right. Is he, he's coming to town. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. No, not the right one. Not the right. One. Oh, Is he better to... not cry? Let's see if he's you upstairs. Are you upstairs? I'm Santa? telling you why. Yeah, I'm Oh, he's in the bathroom. Okay. Oh, too many cookies. Too many right. of those uh, high fiber cookies that people oh, are leaving out for him. Oh, there he oh, is. Oh, hey, Santa. Oh, oh, oh. Merry Christmas. Hi. Oh, oh, oh. How is everybody? Oh, I'm so Good. excited. We seem to be missing somebody. Who? Where's the black guy? Oh, yeah. We're, we, we, we're, we, oh. we're doing something new. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing Blazing well, Hit Radio Well, now. it's great to see all it's of you. It's really good to see you, too, Santa. It's I'm, great to see you, Wiggins. Yes, I'm that guy's replacement. Oh, Way cool. better. Yes, Way better. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hi, Larry. Hello. Hi, Santa. How are you? Good. Are you still a Jehovah's Witness? No, uh, I wow. celebrate. I've been celebrating. You've was, been bringing was, me presents. That was a long time ago. Santa. Yes, I know, but you have to check. You never know. You I'm were... not wasting a present on a on a Joho. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they wow. don't want them. They don't want to be called that. Uh, Joe Hopeless Witness. Then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, hello, uh, producer Bolty. Hello. And hello, I guess I said hello to everybody. Yes, yes, now it's time yes. for for people to sit on I your lap. I didn't say hello to Kathy. Oh, Kathy, your favorite man. You know what? You looked at me, and I'll take that as a hi, because <laughs> you never want to acknowledge me. I'm shocked you even just said my name, Santa. And Kathy will take anything as a hi. Yeah. <laughs> I've known her for years. Yeah. I always leave her a big bag of mistletoe. Yeah, yeah, you do. Thank you. I grind it up first. <laughs> Easier to load. Oh, incense and myrrh. Hey, Santa, we, we have to talk to you some, about something, especially since I'm a mom. You're a busy mom. I am a busy mom, and I uh, one of the things that you got to do this time of year is take the kids to come see you. Yes, it's pretty it's expensive a, to come see you. Yes, uh, thirty four fifty. <laughs> it's a little bit more expensive than that. Oh, I'm getting ripped off. <laughs> Malls all over the country are jacking up their prices for photos with Santa. Back in the day, ten bucks to see Santa, and now. You want to? You want just one print of your photo? It could cost you forty bucks in some places. Well, what you have to do then, if you're on the cheap, you have to just go to a biker bar what and you... find a man with a white beard <laughs> and say, "Would you mind talking to my children? They're in the car." <laughs> and then, can you put this on? And he'll usually do it for a free beer and a shot. <laughs> That's the best way to get a ghetto Santa. That is how you get a Santa. We went and saw you. You 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 saw the girls. I did see that picture. Yes. Uh, we brought him over to Fox 31. You swung by. And, yes, and I, I made the rounds. I had to come on uh, Kathy's TV show. Yeah, but it was really cool. But I was a little upset, Santa, that I kept hinting to you to tell Avery that you know when she's been naughty or nice. Right. right I'm watching. But, but all you kept saying was, yes, I know when you're awake. I was like, that's not what I need from you, Santa. I need <laughs> right. you. How about this? Okay. I, 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 Avery, if you're listening, Santa knows when you've been shaking your booty at school. Yes. And it's not funny anymore. Right, exactly. So here's the deal. Right. You be a good girl and maybe you'll get some presents. And Santa's going to bring some presents for your little sister and all the children. Yay. So maybe we could call you and Absolutely. You, can, you could remind them. It's $14 for the first <laughs> minute and it's five dollars each additional minute yeah. call me now yeah where does all that money go because like new york city they're the most expensive one session with you packages start at 135 dollars to come see you in new york city yes uh, but you get a wallet a mug and a sweatshirt <laughs> and, and i heard that the elves are unionized is that why is because the, there's a union oh, for them so you got to pay all of them all well fees? it turns out uh i'm getting charged with uh you know running a 
child services thing. Oh, you know, where uh, all oh. the kids make the iPhones yeah. because they have tiny little hands like, like elves. Oh, that's child labor right. laws. Child yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I legally can't say that, no. but thank you for saying it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, I wanted to get your opinion on fruitcake. Do you like fruitcake? I mean, yes, Larry's fine with me. If you want to live with <laughs> a man and you want to love another man, Santa has no problem with that. Santa. There are many different types of families out there. <laughs> it's okay, Larry. You don't have. Come over here. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's okay, Santa. All right. Oh, well, now you cute. made him mad. Thanks uh, a lot, Kathy. No, I didn't would make you him prefer mad. to have me call you queer? No. Hey, Santa. You can call me anything you want, man. No, you don't. <laughs> just leave him presents and he'll be fine, Santa. Yeah. <laughs> Larry's an easy man to. He needs to a please. new lightsaber because he gave his away to children. He gave two of them away, yeah, Santa. Isn't that a good thing, though? Away. How about this, Larry? I what? know you gave away your lightsabers, so I know that Kathy Wiggins uh -huh. and um, uh, producer Bolte uh -huh. are each going to buy you a lightsaber for Christmas. They start at 150 <laughs> and go to 270. <laughs> They're available at the, the wizard's one. chest. I got the 151. <laughs> you two can work Wow, that's together. awesome, Santa. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, I'm committing to it right now. <laughs> <laughs> As my name is St. Nicholas. Right, right. Well, well, Santa, Chris Kringle. Yes, that too. <laughs> Santa, we know that Chris you... Chris Kringle. You have, I make cookies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to get ready for Christmas and all that. So we'll, we'll talk to you more throughout the yes. season as we get closer to the holidays. And, and just thank you for coming in. Yes. yes, we'll have a morning where Santa comes and all the kids can call. Yes, ah. yes, that'd be awesome. Awesome. We know you got to get going. Thank right. you for Right, and then the, the next day, uh, the, just the dad's call. <laughs> 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 Merry Bye, Christmas. Bye, Santa. Bye, Santa. Bye. Bye. Uh, this is awesome. He finally has to talk to me because... Yeah. The black guy's gone. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Santa's giving me some respect. I like it. You've, I like you've it come up. Yeah. You've Look come up. Me. That's, come up. Me. that's what I was thinking. I was like, usually Santa talks about me sitting on his lap, and I don't, I'm in the background. No, I'm not going to sit on your lap, Santa. <laughs> now I could actually tell him to his face, I'm not sitting on your lap yeah. this year. Right. Yeah, well, kid. then you're not getting that skateboard. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Wiggins is our kid that's with the picture of Santa, but he's like really crying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, uh, I'll post the picture of Gianna and Avery. I just please. posted the one of them talking to Santa, but the one of them sitting on his lap. Gianna did that stink face that she does. Where it's she her new her thing. Face. I hate it's it. It's her new thing. And so much so, it looks like Santa smells. Like she's kind of looks like. Ew, Santa she, she doesn't have the smile thing down yet. No, but she it's doesn't. so funny. And then you have to, uh, we have to tell the story about how uh, Avery was changing mm. in the middle of the night. Uh, yeah. Gianna was changing in the middle of the night. Wait, yeah. changing what? Her clothes? Yes. Yeah. She decides because they, they changed her crib from a you have to stay in crib to uh -huh. a you can get out crib. Freedom. Right. A freedom crib. A freedom crib. Yeah. Right. That's so funny you guys know the name. Okay, so no, it's then, not. That's he, not that's a, just I'm a just good saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Freedom. Your freedom. It does sound like a, yeah. Oh, that's not what it's <laughs> no, called? It's not. No. Oh. Right. No. But just freedom oh, right. crib. I'm going to trademark good. that now, though. <laughs> so Kathy puts uh, her down and now she's got a little free reign. Yeah. And so you hear her making noise. Do you want. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So it's the other other night and it's like nine o'clock by the time like i've read the books i leave her the humidifier's on everything's cool i say good night i walk out and usually it takes her 10 minutes and she's out right well so i go on and do my thing and i'm sleeping in like 11 30 i get woken up by a noise moms we never sleep like my ears right. are right so sure. i hear it and i'm just like what in the hell so i walk down the hallway and i hear the noise coming out of her room and i hear <laughs> toys going off I hear like drawers opening. I hear, you know, I'm like, what in the? So she, we crack her bedroom door, and her and Avery don't share a room, no. right? No, they, they got their own, own their right. own rooms. And okay. we crack a bedroom door. We crack her door like probably a foot. Uh huh. So I have enough room to look in, you know, uh -huh. and it's pitch black. You know, it's nighttime. So I'm looking in, and I see her <laughs> like going through clothes. She has unzipped her onesie off, and you know that starts up here with a button right. by her neck. She has unzipped that, taken that off, taken off her diaper, threw her diaper in the trash. So props to that kid. Hey. Hey, nice. Threw the diaper in the trash. She has now put on pants without a diaper. Okay. And she's looking for a shirt to go with it. Okay. So shirts are coming out. She's putting them on the ground, trying to put them through, you know. And you're watching this happen? Yeah, I totally sit there watching her. Are, are you amused at this point? Oh, or I'm you totally just thinking kinda... oh, dude, it's so hilarious. Yeah. And then I'm like, I got to get a picture of this, but I need a flash. So I have one shot. To take this photo. She got one shot. Hey, right. Don't miss right. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm like, okay. So I go and get my phone. I sneak back in. So she's still in there 
messing just going around. crazy. Yeah, and she's trying to like figure out this Wonder Woman top, <laughs> but you need an adult to help you with that because it's got Velcro for the mm-hmm, cape, mm-hmm. so she can't get it unstuck. Do you from think each she other. can see? Like, is she? Oh, is no, here, 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 got, she, she knows yeah, yeah. she's pulling out the Wonder listen, Woman. So we, we, we got to the, uh, Kathy took this picture yeah. and the flash went off, and this is the funniest picture you've ever seen. Right? Because she's like so like. Who the hell are you? Right, so I open the door and I hit the flash and that's the, that's the camera that comes back. Oh, <laughs> uh, like, listen, I'm trying to get ready here. Right, or she's like, what the blank are you? Get the blank out of my room. Show, this is my time. Show this is my time. Okay, can we post that? Do you care if we post that? No, Do you no, not want to post no, that? No, no, we need... Okay. We, uh, Larry's going to put a shirt on her. Okay, you're going to censor, you know, censor I, it up. That's the last okay. thing I want yes, is yes. some mommy shame. Yes, yes, yes. What about we could crop it, too? We could, no, I think uh, the funny part is the fact that the room's a mess. Oh, yeah. You know, the fact that she's got clothes out yeah. and she was looking at shoes and- oh, so when you opened the door what did you tell her did and you took the picture did you no did it was you- like catching a criminal stealing from a safe that's exactly you know what it was, was. she sneak into bed then or what no, did she no, do no 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 i just walked in i was like oh did you want you wanted to change your clothes you know you'd like eat the whole the most difficult part about being a parent is your first reaction because you're tired is to yell but you need to be like like this is your chance to oh, build a good human being so right. I did the whole oh would you like to you know because I knew I had gold on that camera so I right. was like I could she take a second right? Right, right. Right. I was like let's camera. get a diaper let's get you back in bed <laughs> no 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 Gianna was like seeing white for like a solid minute oh no like, totally she didn't totally. see anything else she didn't know who it was right. that was helping her she's like <laughs> yeah. oh my god I'm yeah but yeah I'll superimpose a little top on it yeah you, if it's right. so cute yeah, but oh, <laughs> I'm telling you that kid. I love it because her cheeks are so rosy because she was asleep. Uh, you know, and so her body was the temperature was heated up. It's cute. At Thanksgiving, we were showing her pictures from Mr. Efficient's phone of her. Uh huh. And when we would show her a picture, she would do that new stink face. She goes, she goes like this. <laughs> so she was smiling. It's just. It's like she scrunches her face, yeah. and I hate it. it but whatever. So, uh, and remember, Avery also had a. Well, Avery had I her smile t- too big. Avery had her tongue hanging out her mouth for the first year, uh, so you know. But I mean, then she had smile issues because she was like always they, like she looked like Lily from Modern she, Family right. that couldn't <laughs> smile in a picture. That's so awesome. Now, how do how do her and Avery get along? Are they like? Because I remember that one point Larry was saying no, that Avery tried to kick her when she was in the playpen. Is that still oh, ongoing? She did not. No, well, no. It's still like that. But yesterday, is that normal? That's normal. I, I've, I've also seen tender moments between them. Yeah, I'm trying to do more. You two are sisters. You're in this life together. I want you to be a team uh-huh. like each other. You know, like rely on each other. Remember remember how my mom used to make me and my sister kneel in front of yes, each other and, and you I, really like that? I do that. There's a new version of that that I saw online. The t-shirt? The t-shirt. What you is put it? two kids in one t-shirt and then they have to just stand there. So you get Mr. Efficient's t-shirt because uh-huh. they get an extra large one. You put them both in there and they, both their arms go through the shirt and they can't move and they're just forced to be like belly to belly. Are you and, kidding and, me? Right, so yeah. then you just end up laughing and getting along. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. that would be funny. Okay, right. I might try that because right. you know they fight like every five minutes. Now, so. what is is it like? How it is that? Because I've never had a sibling. So okay, what is so what it's do they do? As simple as Avery had her purse and she was playing with it and something. She leaves it to go do something else. Gianna goes and grabs the purse because she knows exactly yeah. what she's doing at two years old. Avery responds, "That's my purse." <laughs> right, but then, and then Gianna holds on to it and then they start pulling it and then it breaks. It was on her birthday that she, uh, she had a little cool little karaoke machine, Daniel Tiger. Her, right, uh, and it was Giannis and Avery was just playing with it, and uh, she's like, kind of, yeah. And Gianna already knew, like, yo, that's, that's mine. mine, right? So it's just right. the little things. It could be candy. Oh. She got too much candy. You poured too much in her cup. Why did she get more? Oh you know my what? God, it's funny because it's a nightmare. But Gianna, even though she can't talk, she knows how to push Avery's buttons. Right, so, you know, like she knows I'm going to go in and take something that belongs to Avery, and then she starts running with it ah. before Avery even sees that she's got it. I'm oh, like, that's this awesome. Is a nightmare. Oh, this that's is just the beginning. Know, it's, it's, just, it's only just begun. Yeah, that's why I keep trying to be like, love each other, stop fighting, because this yeah. is going to get worse. Oh, uh, that's I, great. I fear that like someday you're going to call me and be like, yep, she took the car again. <laughs> right. She'll like, probably be pulling up in your driveway <laughs> exactly. in about 20 minutes. I'm all, Avery, you get out of here with your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you can't bring that here. <laughs> <laughs> He's all pierced, and they're on, they're on a hoverboard. Larry, I think you're a great A real uncle. hoverboard. So don't take this the wrong way. Okay. Okay, don't take it the wrong way. Kathy, are you fearful that he... Because you and Mr. Efficient are very stern. You guys are yeah, both... Right. You, when I'm you set the cop. law down, yeah, you both are bad cops. Larry is the oh, beyond he's... good cop. Are you worried that that is going to be an issue oh, yeah. going forward? I'll be like, uh, this is what it's going to be. I'll be like... I thought I told you you couldn't have those sneakers that they were too yeah, expensive. Larry bought them, right? And then she'll have them, yeah. right? Right. So it's gonna, it'll be like that. 
And, and it'll also be me trying to step up and be like, when I, when she was at the house and she tried to do something funny, I was like, hey, isn't that what you got in trouble for? And so I'm trying to be the guidance guy too, you know? Mm. Good. Yeah. You. I mean, but you need a friend, an ally. Yeah. No, no, she for can sure. Come to you and tell you that. Yeah. She's... She can tell me the secrets, and then I'll be like, hey, all right. Just so you know, uh, she's, she's seen a guy she's, named Darrell. Spotted. Yeah. Uh, right. Spot a plane ticket. <laughs> hey, she's seen a guy named Darrell, which ironically was related to the Darrell that you <laughs> saw <laughs> 20 years ago. Well, I'm going to have to go meet this family. (laughs) I don't care what they say about me. And now. I go dumb. I go stupid. I get crazy. It's Kathy J's Stupid News. (laughs) Ah, stupid. A guy in New York City. Well, New York. Excuse me. Upstate New York. Tries to make a sword. Mm -hmm. You know, like the good old days. Right, right. Like because everybody watches Game of Thrones and all that. Totally. Tries to make a sword, winds up setting 32 buildings on fire. Right, because you have to heat up that <laughs> metal. Get hot. Get right. Get and if you're How do you not get a, it that hot? If you're not a welder or something, right. it's not going to go over well. No. Yeah. And then he wants to hit the thing on the clink, clink. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Totally, nice totally. try, idiot. Right. Well, this guy, it wasn't Game of Thrones. It was a show on the History Channel. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They forged, do that. Forged in fire. Oh, that's right. They they have guys that make competitions, and they make them like yep. axes that are the size like of a person. And he wanted to do that. Okay. Expert weapon makers doing swords. And so in this episode, it was making the swords by bending steel in barrels of fire. Whoa. Wow. That so sounds that's... like a, a Lord of the Rings movie. Right. But does, imagine setting a whole barrel on fire and then right. trying to bend the... It's so hot you're bending the i don't know so anyways his name is john and he's 51 years old his name is john 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 snow no it's not john John decided i could do that i I could do it i got a barrel out back i've been wondering what i was gonna do with it so he went out onto his back porch like didn't even go down to get away from the building it was just right outside went onto the back porch still attached to the house of course and since he's not an expert weapon maker, it was a little windy. House caught fire, just like that. That house was old, so it spread to the old house next to it. <laughs> and the old house next to it, and the Damn. old house next to it. 32 buildings. He had to buildings. go to everybody's house. Hey, you got to get out of your house. I'll be right back. <laughs> hey, you got to get out of your house. I'll be right back. Hey, you got to get out of your house. Right back. I don't know who like, started this. He sounds like the Jimmy Charles right. guy. <laughs> Jimmy John's. Hello. Jimmy yeah, John's. Yeah, grab Hello. a bucket. Sorry. Grab a bucket. Jimmy John's. Don't, 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 32 buildings? Mm -hmm. Thank God there weren't serious injuries, but 20 people, I mean, their life, everything burned because this one idiot. I know. So, like, does he have to call, like, we are farmers, bum, ba dum bum, 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 bum. You're going to see that guy. Yeah. He's all, and then 32 buildings burned down, and we covered it. Yeah. We are farmers, bum, ba dum bum, 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 Right. John got arrested and charged with fourth degree arson. Don't you think that should be first degree? Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe because there was no. endangerment. Maybe it was fourth degree because he didn't plan on killing anybody. Uh, I don't know. All we know is. I hope no pets died and stuff. He's never. Allowed Ever. to do anything. Well, he's there. Oh, <laughs> his money is going to be paying off civil right. civil suits for a long time. He could end up in jail having to sword fight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Enjoy that. That's my that is my biggest fear is if like I were to commit a crime is like in going, to, is not going to jail. jail. No, all of that, all how, the above. How many of those stories kept you guys in line because you were terrified of big? Well, big considering bags, I was five foot until I was like twenty five, yeah. I was terrified of that. Yeah, like totally. I, if I committed a crime, I would. Immediately Immediately, we look, ah, I'm going to Mexico. <laughs> Don't you think they prey on the guy who's like, no, please. Like, it's worse for him. Like, what if you switched it on him and you turned around and you're like, yeah, let's do this. Maybe you would, they'd all be all thrown. You know no, I mean? then you're no. then you're the guy who right. they all, the, all oh, of them right. go to. He's, he's down. Cell number, oh my cellmate God. number 33 right, right. is into right. it. Girl, I was doing it as a detective. Right. I was trying no, to. Lay down. We're going right. to tattoo this uh, bra mind. on your back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so. That's not a bra. Yeah. Uh. All right. Oh, this is so sad, but sad, but cute. Okay. Cute is sad. Okay. Cute, yeah. A possum broke into a liquor store and got so drunk he was passed out the next morning. Shut <laughs> up. How would he even get something open? He broke it when he was running into something. The bottle broke oh, and he started drinking funny. it. So a possum broke... So they do know what they're doing. <laughs> they bro- broke into a liquor store. Yeah, those little possums with their hands. Right? They, they, they can, can do stuff. So it was in Florida. Broke into the liquor store 
Not sure why he was in there, but he, a bottle well, alcoholic. Bourbon, it was an alcoholic was an al- b- possum. Well, right. So the possum started drinking the bourbon. Even possums that it have drunk uncles. <laughs> totally, you know what I mean? Totally. Uncle Dave. Hooray! And everybody's like, oh, he's going to die early. He's cirrhosis. When the employees came in the next morning, they found the possum passed out drunk. Because you hear possums are angry little critters. All right. You don't really want to go near them. Okay. But this one really nice because it was completely passed out didn't even wake up when they were walking in whatever liquor that was they should take that possum on as their spokesperson you know what <laughs> right, I mean right, that's totally their little right. emblem because the picture of the possum does have the broken bottle of bourbon right next to him <laughs> bourbon bubbling awesome possum <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, they called Animal Control, and the Animal Control came and got him. It took the poor little guy three days to sober up before they could release him back into the wild. Oh, my God. He had to be in the drunk tank. <laughs> a little baby drunk, drunk, drunk tank. tank. Oh, my God. Trying to rub up on other possums. Uh, right. Well, I'm sure he was alone. Hopefully <laughs> Maybe he was there was alone. a cat there, a raccoon. Right, that poor cat. Right. And finally, a guy gets caught painting arrows on a road to make his commute easier. Oh my God, that's awesome! <laughs> Wait, I don't get it. So in other words, he replicated the lines of the road that would work in his favor. Yes. So I'm going to do a turn only here. Right, totally. Oh so, man, that's wow. awesome. It's this commute. He lives in China. And on his commute, you see three lanes, right? Mm-hmm. This lane, the left lane, the arrow on the road, you know, it says U-turn only. Okay. The middle lane is go straight, okay. and the right lane is go right. So he wants to go left. So he wants to go left, and he's so sick of the fact that the lane going straight always backs up for okay. a mile, whereas the one the for U-turn people turn lane, U-turn, nobody's in nobody's it. He can go there. left all he wanted. Right, and so he was like, I'm sick of this. So, wow, that's brilliant. He you literally, just need somebody with one of those trucks. I'll show you the picture. Or do you use a can of paint? No, so in the middle of the commute last week, he actually pulled over, you know, safe somewhere in one of the nearby parking lots, went out into the street and started spray painting the straight arrow <laughs> into the left turn lane. It better look legit. If you're going to do it, it's got to look right. Like you got to have a stencil. Right. So there it is. Do you see it? See it? Oh, yeah. He did okay. Okay, yeah. So the U turned arrow is still there. Yeah, but he but just then... he tried to add a triangle to the end of oh that line. God. Yeah, right. Oh, that's to, not too to make bad. It go straight. It's not that bad. Yeah, for sure. It looks as faded as the other lanes. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't look that bad. Oh, my God. We should all do this, and we get up the <laughs> earliest. So we could totally do this. We're totally going to get away with it. Yeah, and then, they, oh, that's good. So he he got caught, of course, because there's security cameras at most intersections. Is these it days. one of those things like shoplifting in China? Is he going to go to jail for a long time? No, he he just got a hundred and fifty dollar fine. Oh, thank God! Because I thought <laughs> yeah, if they, they do that to a shoplifter, what are they going to do to you, messing up right. commute? Yeah. But, yeah. You just don't steal. You can mess up all the roads. Yeah, uh, right. you can do whatever exactly. you want. Just don't with, steal. Mess with the traffic, but don't yeah. steal. They yeah. probably gave that guy a job in you know painting lines. <laughs> right? They're they were all, like, you wow, really good work. Yeah. You got it done in half the time that right. our crews do. <laughs> They'll take all day to do the line. Yeah, the anal raping won't be so bad in China. <laughs> no. oh. Oh. Okay, that's racist. That's right. But I'm bummed. Blazing hit radio. Yeah, hit us up on the Yola Rum line, uh, 303-728-3420. You can text, you can call. Shout can out. Shout us out on the app. Everything is available right in the app. Just hit those three horizontal lines in the menu option. You can access on demand. You can access the shout out and just record a message if you're too nervous to call. Some people are too nervous to call. Text us, whatever you want. Um, Wig, I have a tech question, not to yes. ask on the, on the fly, but yeah. do you think we could eventually have all my bits on the app? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, it, it just it just depends. The newer ones, yes. Like like here's the thing is so we can everything's an on demand, right? So right. when the show's done, you can either keep listening all day, which is I prefer that because we'll have and then we're, we're we're reducing the music, so it's it's a lot better. So it's like one song and then the break, one song and then you guys. So I like that flow. But if you just want the full show, there's the on demand. So to answer your question, we can start putting Lammy in there, all the newer ones right, in right, there. Right. We could throw the older ones in there. Uh, classic, well, classics and then we'll have current. Yeah, yeah, but. Yeah. We, we're we're gonna do it that way, but yes, yeah, I yes, just like that because then people can play them for their friends. That you know, like, oh, they did this one. There it is. Yeah, right. well, and, and that's what people ask. And then on um on the on radio blazinghairradio dot com, you're gonna start putting my interviews, right? Yes, correct. Everything's going up cool. there. We got producer Bolty here. Uh, he's now part of the team with us. Yay. He's always been here helping out Larry, but now he's officially part of the Blazing Hate Radio team. So we're gonna make sure that because I don't have the time like I used to to make sure everything is up on the website, everything's up on social. So we're moving we're, along, people. We're moving we're along. along. What do you th- you don't think twelve jobs is enough for you? No, no, no. I'm going for thirteen. That's, right. that's the record, right? Complain, complain, yeah. This guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, so it, I. I 
I feel bad because there are things that people want, and it is hard to give the listeners everything they want. But we're trying we'll really hard. We'll everyone's everyone's grinding on here. So, um, but we did get a shout out. So, like we said, you can access from the app. Uh, this one, <laughs> people attempt to do voices. And I think they get more ballsy when uh, they're not calling in. And yeah. so this this guy uh, attempted it. Coffee, 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 and Larry and Kathy. Yes, my world is complete. Oh, was that was that Yoda? Yeah. I think yeah. Yoda it was, but Yoda. it was terrible. <laughs> no, Sorry. I thought it was fine. It sounded like he was saying Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. Right. <laughs> yeah, Kathy's like it was perfect. It was perfect. A little shout out to me, Yoda. Yeah. Thank you. And Larry too. Mm. Ooh, green hairy one he has. <laughs> so uh, you know Yoda's junk looks oh, like a dog's. I, th- I thought you. No, no, you okay. know, you know, you know, like, it, but it would be green. It Rocket Pinky like, has. Is right? that what you're saying? Surrounded by white hair, it is. Ugh. I don't even want to think about <laughs> it. Little, two little tiny <laughs> testes. <laughs> what is the movie with James Franco where he is uh, molested or he's oh he's harassed? God. Not molested, but he's harassed by the puppet in the bed. What? You've never, I've seen, never that? seen that. Okay, it is. It is. You know it? No. Uh, it, it is so awkward, but you're like, okay, this is one of their stupid movies that they that right. they've made okay. together. But he he's like, uh, it has to be taken like the 13th century or something like that. And he's just <laughs> he, he's just on an expedition, and during this expedition, he comes across a, a Yoda type character who's like, mm, pants take off, you will. And it's God, just, James Franco he, is so gay. Yeah, yeah he is. <laughs> I think you know, you know, he, he's doing a whole movie based on some uh, popular gay porn star. Uh, yeah, no, I've watched it. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, not the uh, HBO no. series. No, no, this is a, uh, I don't know. The, it is the HBO series. It's called oh, okay. Deuce. Deuce. Yeah. But I the, watch it. The new movie that's coming out, the worst movie ever made, I think that's the title of it, is by him and Seth Rogen, and it's based on a true story, but they're getting Oscar buzz for this movie. Wow. It doesn't come out And to, is that about the porn star? No, no, this, about? this oh. one's about a guy who made, like, a terrible movie, but it was a, it was a story about how this guy had oh, a passion yeah. for creating art, and James Franco plays his character, but... Dave he, Franco's in it, he plays his brother. Yeah, and so... It, it really is getting Oscar buzz, and those guys—they've been around for so long that you know that they know how to make a good oh, movie. Yeah, yeah, they make comedies, sure. but they know what they're doing because right. they've had bombs. They know the feeling oh, yeah. of that and oh, how yeah. to correct things. I, I got to find the puppet scene. I'll, I'll find that, yeah, and then I'll show it to you. To it's, it's really awkward, though. While Just you do saying. that, we have to give a birthday shout out. Oh yes, looking yes, for the puppet, Christina. Christina's a daily listener. I love you guys. She says. Today's my birthday. Yeah. I turned 24 today. Yay. Yes. So can I get a birthday shout out? Yes. Happy, happy, happy birthday, birthday from the morning show to you. Hey, we keep it short. Happy birthday, Christina. And thank you so much for listening and have a good one. So I'll, I'll look for that later because I want to get back to the shout out because I've been told by the uh, the higher ups that we tend to get ADD with some of our breaks and go off on a tangent. Yeah, we and, do. <laughs> we do. So I got to stay, I got to stay to the shout out feature because this question goes to you, Larry, because of last week when we actually had, uh, we were talking about your sci-fi movie uh-huh. that you made yourself. Uh-huh. And, yeah, and, it was, uh, you know, when you're a kid and and you have access, and you're just at home alone, you want to make a movie. I mean, no, don't, you, don't we all want to make a movie? You took it to a whole other level. Well, you got to make a sci-fi movie if you want to make something cool. I was in a desk covered in aluminum it foil. It wasn't a desk. It asking was asking your mom to bring home dry ice so you could have... special effects for the outside of the spaceship, a maybe. Lot of, a lot of us maybe. do that. Coming in with the motorcycle helmet. Well, leaving. you know, you can't breathe on a planet if you don't have your <laughs> rocket helmet on or space Playing the suit. girl and the alien. A lot of... Um, Mainstream actors have played female roles. Taking you know, the wig uh, off Eddie and Murphy. leaving it on the chair so it looks like the lady's still hiding That's behind the chair. That's called special effects. <laughs> These are all things that are done. And Steven how old Spielberg, are you? Steven Spielberg made little movies when he was a kid. Um, I had to be, I don't know, like 14? I don't know. <laughs> hey, but you had a, the hey, creativity right. in mind. Yeah, and you were doing voices awesome. then. I think it's awesome. I do yeah. And everyone, and your cousin called in um, yesterday or on Friday and said that it was an awesome movie. She gave it two <laughs> thumbs up. She's one of the only people that's ever seen it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she says it's really long, though. Um, but 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 we, yeah. <laughs> you I'm going to have to liberties. do the director's yeah. cut. <laughs> so we got this shout out and this question for you, Larry. Hey, guys. Good morning. This is Anthony. I just want to say, uh, how do I get tickets to this premiere of Larry's sci-fi movie? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we will be giving away a pair. I think we should do maybe even a couple pair, but we'll do like a red carpet. Well, you said maybe- you said you would invite two listeners and let them come over to the house and we watch. <laughs> how about this? How about this? We go bigger. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we, uh, when we did, uh, we did something at the Alamo Draft House where we did a small theater mm-hmm. and it fit like, uh, I don't know, I would have guessed maybe like 30 people, uh-huh. maybe a few more. And we'll actually have a premiere at a movie theater 
And we'll do red carpet. Are you kidding me? Yeah, for sure. And I would love it if you and Chris Parenti could interview me oh, behind God. a poster of me and the logo for the film. Larry Huber, <laughs> you're, you're Denver's best kept talent. Exactly. Tell and us all about the creation of this video. Well, after you see the movie, you'll have so many questions. Oh, like, sure. why did you do this? <laughs> why did I come here? Right. Who, who is this? Why? Is it, right. Can I get my check for coming here? <laughs> right. This is why you didn't make it in movies. <laughs> it, hey, if James Franco and them are making a movie about the worst movie ever made, well, me, let's right, make me. the worst yeah. movie ever made. Yeah, yeah, maybe this is it. Maybe they're going to recreate it, and you're going to be an Oscar-worthy contender. I'm pretty sure it's probably less than 10 minutes. You know what I mean? The movie? 10 minutes? I was honestly expecting four. Oh, maybe it's four. <laughs> no, it's, it's probably 10. So I how did you edit 10. it? I mean, did you did you in-camera edit it? Is that yeah, kind of no, no, I, just, I would just shoot and then stop. Okay. And then hit and then record the next, the next shot. Okay. Right. That's awesome. So yeah. is there an obvious stop in between? Or oh, yeah. It... You see the, you know, like, it, <laughs> it couldn't help but do that. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. But yeah. it, sometimes it looks smooth. I mean, there was no, I had no special, like, fading in. Right, right. Cool. Gosh, man, I really think that could be potentially the best prize ever given by Larry and Kathy. Oh, yes. You haven't seen the movie yet. <laughs> no. Right. Um, exactly. And then I'm going to try to find my other movie. But, yeah, so I, I don't know if that one exists on. Uh, What's in, the other one? The one where I made my mom and dad be in a movie. Movie. Oh, right, right, right. And your dad was messing up the lines, but you went back and he kept hitting on my mom, and I was like, you're not supposed to try to have sex with her. And he, right. like, he, like, I, I even, like, made up a hotel room in the basement. <laughs> wow. And it really looked like a hotel room. You couldn't just go upstairs to their room? No, and... no, no. I needed uh, area. Okay. I needed camera <laughs> space. I needed to breathe. <laughs> yeah. I needed yeah. tripod space. I needed space. to be able to go I'm zoom in, zoom director. out. Right, exactly. Yeah, cut! Right. <laughs> Quiet on the set! Yeah, the fact that you were yelling at your dad. That's all Stop you hear it. in the background. Stop it! That's not you. It's not the line. <laughs> Oh, That's my awesome. God. And he's all, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Oh, he man. knew what he was doing. You would do the same thing. Yeah, it was funny, too. I would have loved to have met your dad. I know he passed oh, away when dude, you were younger, so but I would have funny. loved to have met him. Dude, right. everybody just flocked to him. He was like a guy with a radio show that didn't have a show. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. It was where he was. Yeah. And there were so many people that... um when you would come to the uh, jewelry store to get stuff done by him and then just keep coming back because he was just an infectious, funny person. Right. And like, uh, like yeah, at his funeral, the line was out the door. It was insane. Did he have Aww. brothers? A nine bro, uh, nine siblings, and so it was, uh, so like I haven't met them, have I? I've never. Um, maybe if you met their si the kids from them, like but I don't Tina, know if, right, right, right. Okay. okay, right. I don't think you met my uncle who likes to take his junk out. Well, no, that's never a good thing. Yeah, Danny. unfortunately, yeah. Dang it, dang yeah. it. Yeah. I know, the, I know the names though. Like if right. so much so, if if I get <laughs> if I'm ever somewhere and he's like. I'm Larry's Uncle Danny. I'm gonna be like, whoa! Yeah. Like I don't even, I don't even can't even sh shake your hand, you perv. Yeah. No, step away. <laughs> Where's step your away. van at? <laughs> <laughs> but oh, for real, your van. But so, did your dad? Was he around long enough to know that you were you calling into the radio station no. doing the voices mm -mm. by then? You weren't. No, I was oh. just still a kid. Uh, so yeah, he. I think he died when I was like uh, maybe fourteen, fifteen. Oh, oh man, okay. something like that. So right before you started doing the radio stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh. I mean, it started right after that, but it was like, uh, yeah, it'd have been nice to know that he knew I was on the path to something. Yeah, right. Uh, because <laughs> I was definitely not like he was so frustrated because here he was running this jewelry empire. He like had great. You know, he was a master jeweler, so there totally. wasn't anything he couldn't do. So uh, jewelers from all over the state would send people to him to fix stuff or to create stuff. And we had an amazing artist on staff who created designs and stuff like that. Right. So we had a really successful business. And he's like, this is yours, son. You'll right. inherit this. Yeah. <laughs> and my, and meanwhile, I'm like, I want to sell hot dogs and tell jokes <laughs> down the street. <laughs> and then, so literally, uh. my sister's like, uh, I'll learn. Right. Uh, crickets. Right. Uh, and she's like, I'll learn and hit crickets. And then she, of course, is the one that's still in jewelry. Right. Yeah. She's the jeweler. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Well, she's a certified gemologist. I like selling wieners <laughs> yeah. and jokes. Yeah, well, right. He ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Him, and, him and your mom did a great job with oh, you. Oh, no, there. for sure. Oh, you so. know your dad's very proud. Well, listen, there's a lot of uh, comedians and like uh, funny people that were, you know, just. Uh, their situation required them to adapt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so since I didn't have a lot of friends that weren't, you know, Jehovah Witnesses, oh. um, I watched a lot of TV, I watched a lot of movies, and that's where, like, you pick up a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, you're right. good. You got, yeah. you got the humor. Oh, you got the Plus funny he's bug. got, like, 30 different friends in his head. 30? Yeah. You think it's only 30? <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. 30, yeah. 300. 830, yeah. Well, we all hope we're going to see that uh, that movie someday. Three, oh, no, no, for sure. 303-728-3420. Call us, text us, give us a shout out. The Yellow Rum line is open. This is Larry and Kathy's Blazing Hit Radio. Live from the Mile High City. Blazing music.
basically more of us. Yep, all day long. Uh, less music, more of you. It's just it's the way it should be. Damn it! Right, people uh, have spoken, and yeah. so we're speaking, and we're having longer. a good time. Yeah, no, we're having a great time, and it's awesome because we're ke- keeping the traditions going of what Larry and Kathy today are all about, especially when it comes to the holiday season and the Christmas wish. Uh, and we've got tons of letters coming in already. Uh, a lot of them, man, even out of state. You don't feel like you just need to be in Colorado to have a Christmas wish granted. We've had people from all over send them in. Um, all you have to do is uh, send your Christmas wish to Christmas. Wish Wish at KS107. I'm. Uh, no, Christmas wow. wish at blazinghitradio.com. See, but it was a tradition. That's why you're so used to saying it. <laughs> exactly. it so it's Christmas wish at blazinghitradio.com. Or I you knew can, that was going to happen once. One yeah. time, but you didn't say it all the way. So it's okay. Okay. Yeah, no. out of the way. Or you can text the word wish to 303 728 3420. You'll get a link to how you can donate. If you're in a good spot and want to contribute, we have a GoFundMe set up or the link to so you can write your letter. I, yeah. can't, I can't express this enough because I've been going through the wishes. If you don't provide contact information, Oof. we move your wish to the to the no pile. To so the pile that because, we can't because because we have so many wishes that get all the right criteria in that we take from those. Right, right. So definitely. Include- so Claudia, I'm sorry, <laughs> you right. know, and, like that wish didn't have the right info. Or, or send it back, Claudia. Send with the right information. Your right. contact information, theirs, and a couple paragraphs about the situation. If it's toys, if it's a bill paid or anything, just let us know. Yeah. Okay. And the movie that we talked about earlier with James Franco is called Your Highness. Oh, and here, and and I'm not oh, gonna. That's right. I'm the, not gonna play the I audio because I don't. I don't. No, I, I, did. Yeah, I don't know if how, how bad the audio is for it, but because uh, there may be some bad stuff on there. But yeah, uh, there, there he is. See, and they all make like he makes him kiss him and everything, and that's <laughs> okay. That movie looks funny. I never. It wasn't Natalie Portman in it. Yeah, it yes. was a pretty funny movie. Okay. No, it does. It wasn't. Yeah. No, did you interview wasn't. anybody for that movie? <laughs> I didn't even, no. She interviewed the the one that's like touching all the people. Right. I interviewed the alien. <laughs> the alien. Oh man. Hey. Well. Yeah. Make sure you. Send in those Christmas wishes. Kathy Jays has got to get doing her thing to get over to the everyday yes, show. Uh, but send them in. Tons of letters are coming in. Christmas wish at blazinghitradio.com. Kathy, will you give this to Greg Dutra for me? What? Mm. Oh, get off of me. Mm. Get off like of me. Puppet, gross. Oh, mm. Larry and Kathy Jays Blazing Hit Radio. Blazing Hit Radio, Larry Uliberry, Kathy J. Wiggins. Kathy J. just exited the building to do an early taping at Fox 31. Yeah, they got something going on over there. But uh, we were talking about, uh, before she left, uh, Your Highness, the movie with James Franco to where the Yoda-ish type character uh, took advantage of him. And of so James I, Franco. I, it's like a, it looks like a medieval kind of movie. Yeah, it's a medieval movie. It's it's all the guys from This is the yeah. End. Uh, and so they, they even have pot in there and all references and all that stuff. So it's a pretty funny movie. But the scene I was talking about was when him and... Uh, uh, Danny, uh, who's the guy from um, that guy right there? Yeah, yeah, he's Dan- so funny. I forget his name. Danny something. Right, Gosh, he, darn it. he's in all these movies. He's also stars in a lot of movies. With Will Ferrell. Yeah, yeah. So they they actually walk into this house where that creature is, and they go and greet him. So here's the audio from that. Looks as if someone is cultivating glorious herbs in here. And you see hey, all the pot. Is that you over there? Who dares enter my den? It is I, Prince Fabius, and my brother, Prince Thaddeus. We come to seek counsel. Come, come, give me kisses. It's <laughs> so gross. They're all making out. No. Pretty, please. Kiss it on the mouth. For the quest. Ah. I do it every time I come. Hello. Nice to meet you. Oh, God. Gross. It, Fabius has been coming here since he was a boy. You did this when you were a child? Yes. <laughs> we had great times, didn't we? Yes, yes, we did. <laughs> you would kiss him? Mm-hmm. Sometimes we would do other things. <laughs> like what? Mm, when I was younger, we'd take our shirts off and jump on the bed. Playful secrets. <laughs> Either oh my way, God. It, it, it was like the uh, that was Harvey Weinstein before Harvey no, Weinstein. Yeah, was, so, uh, that's I hilarious. mean, it's no laughing matter, but that scene was stupid. So <laughs> just, I wanted to play it for you because I, I wasn't okay, crazy. Now I'm gonna want to see that movie because this is funny. Yeah, it's just is funny. it on Netflix? Uh, I'm, no. sure, I'm sure. Who knows? Okay. It's it's all those movies, and the guy's name's Danny McBride. I forgot. I forgot. He's Danny McBride. Hilarious. He's he's so funny. So, um, but now on to an update. Now with that, Kathy's out. Producer Bolte's on the mic, giving us an update on the break-in situation. Right. Uh, back in the day, 
Back in the day, he, it was yeah. like how long ago when this uh, happened? What up, guys? Uh, I would say what was that three months ago? Yeah, three months ago. This is uh, you heard on the show. Uh, Bolty had some neighbor that had or somebody broke into your house. Yeah, his apartment. No, it's a high rise. High rise. And in downtown, one of those cool ones over by the uh, baseball uh, park. Is that what it's called? Course, course field. Baseball Larry on field. sports. The baseball yeah, field. Yeah, the baseball The baseball field. courts. The courts. Yeah, the, the baseball, baseball courts. courts. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like, so then this guy, or no, you don't know who it was, but you suspected that it was your neighbor, but somebody broke in, took your shotgun, and maybe who knows what else. Mm-hmm. But the way you live and, like, no, the front door was not entered in, and so they kind of came through the sliding glass door? Yeah, so our balconies are about... 10 feet, 7 feet across from each other. I'm on the fifth floor, and he actually put a ladder across from his to mine, and that's how he did it the first time. He peeled open the sliding glass door with a screwdriver. Oh, a screwdriver, Which is okay. insane. You yeah. figured the glass would have broke. And so I you were like, on guard at that point. After the first time, you, yeah. you were just any noise or anything that you'd hear. So the second time he, he came into your place, you actually caught him on video and woke up. I was laying in bed. What are you doing? What you doing? What are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Watching you break into my house? Am I? Yeah, you are. You're wearing a mask. Why are you on a ladder? I'm not doing shit. What are you doing? You have a good night, boy. You, you're climbing across my ladder. Am I? What you doing, man? You planning on breaking into my house again? Wow. Yeah. So that you got that on uh, your phone, and what, what happened after that? Man, that sucked. Yeah. <laughs> it was not fun. Um. So. The, I actually, we called the police when I saw the ladder, and I'm just waiting for him. He had already stolen my gun, so I, I like grab a golf club. Right, you're like, I, I have to have a kitchen knife. <laughs> yeah, and this this kid's just crazy, so who knows what he's got. Right, and then who knows, because he, it was kind of obvious that you were home. So it was like, why, why is this guy creeping over anyway? Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you heard the story, that's kind of what you ended up going, getting a restraining order on the guy, and that was that. And uh, so then you, of all people to go down the street, you're walking down the street after a uh, baseball game. Yeah, well, it was an oh, Avs game. Avs game. And uh, we're walking down the, one of the streets downtown, and he's walking down the same street. Of all. And I'm like, this right. kid. Right, and I'm, right. I'm shaking. I'm ready, like, okay, what, what's what going to go what's down? What's going to happen, right. And he had the balls to say something. Like, what up? I don't know. Oh, what I, was, I almost wanted to turn around and just say, what? Right, because you at that point could have just called on your phone and said, hey, this guy's uh, breaking the restraining order. And if I was to get in a fight with him, I win with the cops. They show right. up. I said he tried to assault me, and he, I have a restraining order on him, so he's right. screwed. The nerve of people. People don't admit fault with anything. And, 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 and the guy was caught Ever. climbing a ladder. getting Yeah, and it's like you catch him red-handed, and it's like, nope, still not guilty. Right, and that's why some Stupid. people like take care of business other mm-hmm. ways. Mm-hmm. You know so, what I mean? I mean, some people like chalk it up to karma, and they'll be like, oh, he'll get his karma. But some people are all, no, he needs to be bumped, to in, bumped into in a dark parking lot. But at least we can talk about it. Right, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to if we did that. <laughs> right? Oh, that's right. That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so he finally, you finally went to court and all that, and yeah, he got the restraining order. And this guy, he just bumped into him recently oh, by chance. That was, okay. Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah. So that was just by chance. So uh, he still had the uh, the balls to lip off. You know what yeah. I mean? It's yeah. just like you should have so just lame. found a cop and be like, he's following me and have a restraining that's what I order. Told him. Oh, yeah, I just yeah. said you called mm-hmm. the cops. Yeah. But whatever. I mean, you're not petty, and and the thing is, you don't live in the same. He had to move and all that. Yeah, but we obviously are still hanging out downtown. So and he likes playing pool. So I'm gonna see him around. Hopefully that I can just mm-hmm. be like, get out of here, bro. I'm here now. Right. That's how it works. If I see him at a restaurant, I'm go to Olive Garden and he's sitting there having uh, dinner. I I'm like, beat it, nerd. Go, this yeah. is my place yeah, now. See. Right. <laughs> You're taking ownership of the yeah. Olive Garden. Yep. Y'all, this is Mike's Olive Garden. Uh huh. <laughs> oh man, people.